Hello, listening people. H- hello. You're listening to Spit and Polish Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. I'm Ryan Slowinski. And I'm Bartek. Yes, you are. If... Oh, thanks. Thanks. I wanted to give you permission to to have that name, and I gave it. I'm glad that you you sensed the subtle question in my tone. Yeah. Like, because I needed clarification. Yeah, that's right. And I hear the subtle question in the audience's tone, which is, what's going on? What's this show about? Who are you guys? Well, great, great, great tone, guys. We've well, already said our names and let's name the show. Yeah, but like, you know, what's their, what's their deal? Like, who who are they in terms of motive? You know? Uh, okay, yeah. You know? What's our motive? Well, entertainment, obviously. But what's our specific tactic? Well, talking about movies, specifically unappreciated masterpieces, which... Is you know our show? Is that our universal tactic? Universal life like tactic. Analyzing films, like spiritual what if, what if tactic. We're playing poker or something. Well, it has to be poker based on a video game, or and then that video game is based on a movie, and then that movie is based on a book, and then that book is based on an old wives' tale, and then that old wives' tale is based on just a, a picture. So for all the listening people who this is your first episode, do you get it now? You get it now? <laughs> you up to date? Good. Because we're up to date. No, we talk about films uh, in a feature-length commentary format in which we believe these films, whatever one we're covering in the episode, uh, deserve more love. They're the kind of film that don't necessarily, you know, come to the top of the mind when you think, oh yeah, terrible film, or oh yeah, brilliant film. They're the kind of films that, you know, have fallen into the wayside, fallen into, I guess, mediocrity, into into the forgotten wasteland. But we say, hey, maybe not. Maybe there's something here, because sometimes a movie can surprise you. If anything, that's a that's a guarantee. A movie will definitely surprise you. And these are the kind of movies that, that have, you know, something in them that we feel is unappreciated to the point in which they're a masterpiece. Because on a level, not on a level, they are some of the best films ever made, you know, these films. You know, they they are an art form. People had, someone had an idea. And they took that idea and gave it to someone else. And that someone else gave it to someone else. And eventually it spread around to Hollywood or, or whatever. England or whoever wanted to make it. They made the film... And and they gave it to us to enjoy, and maybe we didn't enjoy it enough. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to try and, uh, you know, delve deep into the artistry and entertainment that is whatever film we're covering. Uh, Bartek, what is the film we're going to be covering in this episode of the show? I'm glad you asked, because that's one of the things we do every episode, and it means that we're progressing. Yeah. The film that we are doing today, or, well, you know... On this episode, it's not necessarily that this episode's only available on specific days. Yeah. <clears throat> is V Oshem Jeshont Dni Dookoa Shviata. Ah, yes. Now, here's the thing. We're called Spin Polish, likingly, because we're always spinning and we are both Polish. You get it? Wait, Ryan, look at the time. We have to spit now. <laughs> And Bartek just did the thing in which he said the title, but it's in Polish. Well, that oh, that was spitting. Uh, he oh, the spat- thing before the spitting. thing before yeah. the spitting, which was you looked at your watch and said, you know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you, you spoke in Polish, which is really embarrass- embarrassing for me. And uh, I imagine the guest and the audience as well, which is don't speak Polish, mate. Just, just, yeah. just don't speak it. I mean, I'm sure Polish listeners are sitting there going, for, for, for. I understood what he said. Yeah, the Polish listeners are like, oh, yeah, they can spit, but no Polish. All right, I see. Oh, well, 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 half of them, half of them don't do so, the Polish. So. so what are you trying to say, Ryan? I don't know what you said. What did you say? Vos- Tell me the name of the film in English. Wait, you, you really couldn't discern it from Oshem Jeshon to Dni Dookoa Shviata? Nah. Oh, why don't, why, don't you, why don't you try saying it out loud? Maybe that'll help. <laughs> Fuck you. No, just look, it's, it's written right here. Yeah, it's got a, just a W as one. Yeah, just how would you read this? I wouldn't. <laughs> but, I mean, look, you know all these letters except that one. But, oh that my one, god, but... could it be Around the World in 80 Days? Yes! Oh, I nailed it. So you just had to look at it yeah. to get it. For some reason, when I read it, I can see that, but when you read it out loud, it just comes out as gibberish, you know, complete gibberish. So Around the World in 80 Days, starring uh, one of our favourite uh, actors in the world, uh, Jackie Chan. 
I thought you meant Bruce Cook, but yes, yes, Jackie Chan. <laughs> this movie would have been ten times better if Bruce Cook and Jackie Chan were teamed up to go around the world in 80 days. Just to clarify, listening people, this film would be ten times better than already being one of the greatest films ever made. So imagine that. Yeah. It was kind of like, if it was ten times better, the universe would fold in on itself. That's that's how that's how good it would have been if Bruce Cook from Thunderpants, the movie about a boy who farted so hard that he launched wants to rock it into space with his own farts. Ryan, are we the only two people that know about Thunderpants? No, we do have a guest this episode that knows quite a lot about Thunderpants. You know, I'm not saying that this guest is an expert in how sexy and uh, a pre-adolescent boy's legs are in that film. I'm not going to say that this guest said in that episode that Rupert Grint, a uh, uh, preteen, uh, his legs were very sexy. I'm not saying that the guest said that at all. The guest said that they said that. Isn't that right, the guest? The guest, of course, is our amazing friend, Rupert Grint. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, last time I checked out, wasn't Rupert Grint. You look... Does anyone know what Rupert Grint's up to <laughs> these days? Like, I swear the last thing I heard about him was he was just running around as an ice cream man. I think, from memory, he's doing a TV series. I Good for him. Know. Who's our guest, Bartek? Didn't you just say Rupert? Oh, that was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. It's Emma Watson, but you know, I don't want to Oh yeah, I can, I can take that. Ew. You want to take that? She's probably the lamest actor out of the three. Mm. I'd rather be Daniel Radcliffe. Go on. Ladies and gentlemen, to some her, she's called Hermione, but to us she's called Lauren Tice. Tice? Hi, yes. You, not, got, it, you got it right. Not Lauren Thighs. That is incorrect. Or right. Thuiz. I've gotten all of those, so... What about Thuiz? All of them. What, a, what about Tuhuiz? No. There we go. Is that, is that go. Polish? Well, no, Polish, it's Dutch. The Polish Fucking language doesn't Dutch. have a TH sound, so that's... Uh, uh, hint, hint. Tuhuiz. She's not Polish, then. But you guys, you know what you can do. You know what that means, Ryan? What? When they try to say third, they say third. <laughs> <laughs> guys... What you're going to do now is you're going to take your part of the responsibility up now because we've been pretty responsible to you guys. And you guys, you know, I guess you've been responsible by listening, but now yeah, we've you, had to explain everything. We've had to explain everything because you're so dumb. Logically. Uh, you have to get your copy of the film Around the World in 80 Days uh, from uh, what? Was you, that the title or was that the, the, the direction? Get yeah, your get, film from around the world. Get your copy of the film around the world okay, from 80 yeah. days. I said it that way. We so don't. Succinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which came out in what year? The same year as Euro Trip 2004. Uh, Euro Trip, which we haven't covered. <laughs> um, get your copy ready because I'm going to do a countdown and, and from three. And when I say play, you're going to press play and we're going to be synced up, hopefully. So now, get... is it three to, to two or three to zero or what? Um, I, they'll, they'll know. You'll know. Okay, so three, two, one, play. Ah, yes. Here we go. Now, this is a beautiful shot here. It's a rock skipping across the water, and it was a, quite a beautiful image to start the film out on. And, ooh, the credits have kind of, ooh, they kind of fade like a cloud. <laughs> is that foreshadowing, I think? You know, Maybe. Maybe it's a bit of foreshadowing. Now, guys, let's just jump into the first question that I usually ask, which is, what is our history with this particular film? Bartek, I'd like to hear from you first. A few years ago, I believe it was, um, you invited Lauren to come onto our show, and you gave her a choice between two films in which to do on the show. I can't remember if it was the Thunderpants episode or a later one. No, it was... I think it was... You get to choose Avengers. between the Tuxedo uh. or, yeah. or Around the World Day Days, both of, which, both of which are Jackie Chan films. Yes. Yeah, so, so I remember you, you said that you gave her this choice. So that was my... Uh, that was my liminal form of discovering this film. But I never looked into what this film was. So when you eventually you know, within the last week of the time of this recording, told me that we are finally doing Around the World in 80 Days with Lauren, I actually had to look up what this film was. And the first thing I saw was starring Jackie Chan, and I was very happy. <laughs> 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 and this, just for a bit of context, this is at the height of Jackie Chan doing all of these type of movies. You know, we have the tuxedos around this time. We have... Uh, um, 
Uh, what were the movies uh, he did with Owen Wilson? Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights. He was doing, like, The Spy Next Door. He was doing, like, all of these kind of weird American comedy movies in which he plays an Asian man that's kind of randomly inserted into what would be normally a white guy's story, mm. particularly, which I quite enjoy, and he's doing Jackie Chan action. But this isn't a white guy's story. This is around the world in 80 days. No, it's completely different. It's not got anything to do with the English at all. Um, Lauren, what's your history with this magnificent film? Other than literally every single time after our first episode... I gave you two choices, one of which was always Around the World in 80 Days, which she always declined to do I until was, I just decided I enough is enough. I wasn't aware that you kept doing your choices. Oh, I yeah, always yeah. kept saying, like, do you want to do this one or this one? And then I always said the other one. <laughs> and now I chose until this now. one. I chose this one until for you. Now. So um, clearly you don't have a history with this film. No, I do. I do. I watched it as a child. I think it was one of the ones mum had on VHS. Ooh, Ooh. A really late VHS Ooh. as well. Yeah, yeah. VHS or like one of the early DVDs. Yeah. Um, And mum would chuck it on if I was sick at home. Or it'd be one of those movies you, you are home sick lying on the couch and it'll be on on like midday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I completely get it. And you loved it as a kid? I think I liked it. I didn't, I don't, I don't know whether What about I now? It. Now I have an appreciation for Steve Coogan. Um, well, that's good because yeah. I grew up on this film. I watched it when I was younger and um, I always liked Steve Coogan's character the best. He's always one of those British actors that whenever I see him, I do think of this particular film. is one of the first films with him I had seen and I have associations with him as an actor from this. I, I love him. He's just got a great f- British face about him. He I knows can't... how to pull really weird grins with those teeth. And... Yes, the one thing I noticed is I could not stop staring at his mouth the entire time yeah. the way through. I'm like, why am I staring at his mouth? I will say he has one of, just because of his British smile, he has one of my favourite gags in Hot Fuzz. In Hot Fuzz, in the very beginning, when um, Simon Pegg is going to be, you know, booted off to the countryside and he's, like, demanding to take this higher and, like, every level of the person that he wants to take it higher is already there, but they just kind of enter. Steve Coogan's, like, the second level guy that he wants and he just, like, he just spins around in a chair that's already in the room and he's like, ah, yes, how are you? And he's, like, got this big, cheesy British smile going on and it just... Every time, every time, he spins in that chair or he enters and he just has this big goofy grin and he's like reading off like pieces of information that they've secretly listened to. He always cracks me up and in this movie, I think he really uses his talents because he has a real dry wit in this movie and he's a type of character that could be annoying and or annoying in several ways you know he's 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 aloof he's he's very eccentric he's very very over the top british and arrogant but also he you could get annoyed with the fact of how self serious his character can be at times but i think steve coogan brings enough charm to the role that even as a child i could recognize in terms of his acting ability that he really brought a lot to the role that could have been mishandled by another actor i think you know that's where the beauties of this film is who thought teaming up Jackie Chan and Steve Coogan was going to be a good idea? And it works, you know. Jackie Chan, we've had, we've talked about him a couple of times on the show now. He's, he's one of those actors that just, he's got a charisma, a childlike innocence mm. and charisma about him. And this is a different movie for us to cover with him because he's playing a bit of an asshole on a level because he's lying and he's a thief, even though he's doing it for good reasons. Mm -hmm. For the majority of the movie, he is exploiting someone who has got more to lose than he does. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an interesting thing because usually Jackie Chan's a nice guy. Just poor, innocent Jackie Chan. So um, with this film, it's based on a source material by Jules Verne. Um, Lauren asked before we started recording this who Jules Verne was. Mm-hmm. Do you know who Jules Verne was, Bartek? Um, I first learnt of Jules Verne thanks to Back to the Future Part 3, because Clara and the Doc Emmett Brown bonded over Jules Verne. I can't say that I was ever familiar Did with Did you mean of... Doc Emmett Walsh? No. I... <laughs> 
That's the actor. <laughs> I would love it if M. Emmett Walsh played M. Emmett Brown. It would have been great. Was he M. Emmett? No, 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 no. I just want him to be M. Emmett Walsh. Sorry, go on. You were saying Back to the Future 3 informed you on Jules Verne's existence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a kid. and uh, But I've never been familiar with any of Jules Verne's works. Oh, okay. Well, Jules Verne, I was explaining before, is one of those... One of the famous science fiction novelists of the era is either him or H.G. Wells, you're a fan of. You know? so, so obviously around the world in 80 days, he did, uh, I'm pretty sure he did Journey to, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Yeah. Um, he did, I can't remember what it was called, I think it was like Race race to the Moon, Race to Mars or whatever, or Rocket to the Moon, where he was basically like another wager type of thing, where it's like who can build a rocket to go to space quicker and this was obviously before we had the capabilities of doing this Mm -hmm. and he kind of detailed out what rockets would be like a bit so that's kind of neat Ooh, slinky uh (laughs) ooh, slinky so yeah a famous scientist you know science fiction novelist and fantasy on a level two he's one of those great kind of um minds so and yeah, and he liked to have fun in his work. So seeing a film like this be made out of his works is actually quite enjoyable. You know, it, mm. it's a very uh, British film. This even, you know, like this has a real British British sensibility. Not just because of all the mutton chops that Lauren is fixating on. Yeah, no, that's one thing that I wrote in my notes. In my notes, I was like, lamb chops, lamb chops everywhere. Lamb chops, lamb chops mm. everywhere. I like. Um, we have a few returning actors. Of course, Jim Broadbent was in the Avengers. Uh, and, he, of course, Lauren only does movies on this show that feature ha- actors who have appeared in Harry Potter. And, of course, he's in Harry Potter. Yes, yes. As Sluggy Horny. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Is he a good guy? What, or a bad guy in, oh, in Harry, Potter. Harry Potter? Well, he was Harry in Slytherin, so yes. clearly... <laughs> he was a Slytherin, and he kind of accidentally helped Voldemort. But was he a good guy or a bad guy? On the fence, both. I need it. There is no black was, and white. There's no fucking grey area in Harry Potter. It's either black or white. Give me a black or white. He was a coward. Okay, so good guy then. All right, good. good. He liked special people, so he kind of not not like you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Touched like, by an angel special. I mean like people that have special things abilities. He liked, <laughs> mean touched he by an to... angel special. <laughs> like special needs. Yes. Okay. I haven't heard touched by an angel special used in that regard. Okay. Um, also, why does that guy only have one sleeve? Because he has to show his tattoo. Really bothered me. Because he has to show his tattoo, Lauren. You know, if you had a tattoo on your arm in the way that he does, in the way that he does... Look, Lauren's got a tattoo on her wrist, and for some reason, she's rolled her sleeves down. Why would you do that, Lauren? (laughs) Other than to show your tattoo off. And that's what that guy was doing. I completely understand where he's coming from in terms of wanting to show that tattoo off. Maybe he just got it. And it needs to breathe, and a sleeve might, you know, exacerbate that. You know, like you don't know. Maybe he really thought this through beforehand, and you've come in going, eh, "Lamb chop, lamb chop, lamb chop. Why no sleeve?" <laughs> you know, it's it's so easy to come in and judge a guy's lifestyle choice. You know, it's really rude of you, actually, Lauren. It's quite shocking. Are there any other actors in this movie that were in Harry Potter? Steve Coogan didn't voice no. one of the magical paintings or some shit. Wasn't no. Jackie Chan Harry Potter? <gasps> no, you idiot. Jackie Chan was Voldemort. Oh. I would fucking love it if Jackie Chan was Voldemort. I feel like he would play it no different other than more hand-to-hand action sequences <laughs> would happen. And, like, he smacks Harry Potter on the ass with a wand because... Jack Jane always in his fight sequences always have to like smack someone on the on the ass with some kind of object. Like in this film, he does it with like a stool or a bench or whatever. And but in uh, in the tuxedo, a girl touched his ass with her finger. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, and he didn't like that at all. I do like the police outside racially profiling any Asian men. Like those two guys were clearly like. Indians wearing turbans or whatever, but they know they're searching for a Chinese guy, well, but they're just like, eh, racial well, profile. Ryan, what country is India in? I mean, what continent is India country in? Country India is in? Yeah. India. <laughs> <laughs> like, what continent is India in? Asia. Right? And they were looking for Asians. Yeah, I know, but you know what I mean. They know specifically they're looking for a Chinese guy as well, so mm. it's got like, they see guys with beards and turbans, and they're just like, get him. 
and and significantly darker skinned as well. So it's kind of like ah, uh, racial profiling never never not existed. So there you go. Ah, uh, look, the light bulb exists. Mm. Did you think we we're gonna meet Thomas Edison at any point with this I kind of film where like, you met people? I felt like he might pop up at the end or something. Yeah, I thought Steve Coogan was gonna re- even though I'd seen this film, I thought Steve Coogan was gonna find out at some point what a fucking hack Thomas Edison was or something rather, because Thomas Edison was a bit of a bit of a hack kind of guy, you know, stealing other people's kind of uh, inventions or taking patterns or their lunches. But in a way, making electricity something we have to pay for because Tesla wanted to make it free. Um, yeah, yeah. Edison was a jerk, is what I'm basically trying to say to you. Uh, well, if Thomas Edison's a fan of the show, then he's not a jerk. Thanks, Thomas, for making it possible for us to broadcast Ryan, today. Ryan, you can call him Tom. No, no, he likes Thomas. Okay. He's a big fan of the TV show Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, don't drop that Buddha. That that Jade Buddha. Don't drop that. That's our MacGuffin for the film. We need that. We how need many, that. How many times do you reckon they said um, drop it, J- Jade Buddha, in the movie? Oh, not as much as you would think, right? Well, Ryan, it is my pleasure to announce that we are going to do a Jade Buddha count in this episode. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> We've already missed like four of them. <laughs> then we start on four. Uh, don't you like how it indicates that he invented rollerblades? Yeah. I'm pretty sure rollerblades would have existed by now, right? By the time Queen Victoria was in her old age. Jesus used rollerblades. Yes. Did he? Yeah. Why not? What do you mean, why not? Why not? It's history. Historical. You know, he rollerbladed over, you know, water. That's what they say. Yeah. Was was actually, yeah, yeah, it was water, rollerblading over water. You see that guy in the background, this guy, no, he'll come back, the guy, that guy there holding the book, the brown book, the one who informs the queen in the end of what happened, mm-hmm. he was in Thunderpants. Yes, he was. He was the other tenor. Mm. The other, the world's greatest tenor. Oh, yes, okay. And he was in Breaking Bad as well, and it's just great to see him pop back up in a film like this. Oh, no radio waves. Well, you know, Ryan, apart from anyone who would have exclusively appeared in uh, Big Fat Liar, that means that this would be one of the biggest returns. Oh, yeah. Well, do we know if there's anyone that wasn't in Big Fat Liar? I didn't look up who who the captain was. <laughs> mm, who knows? He who, could who played, have been Paul Giamatti. <laughs> who played the girl in Big Fat Liar? Amanda Bynes? No, no, sorry, not the little girl, the, the, the assistant girl. Oh, I don't know. The one who, like, at the end, she doesn't smile or something. Yeah, it makes weird faces, she, I don't she'd know. She'd probably be the biggest return. He, oh, her and Julia White. Yeah, and uh, John Cho. <laughs> yes. Um, this is a great sequence here of, get it, Chinese whispers. Mm. Did you yes. get that? Yeah, yeah. Did you get that? It's yes. a great little, great little joke there. Yes. Jackie Chan found it funny just you know, then. He, he, he was like, oh. And it probably would have to be Chinese whispers because it couldn't be called telephone, right? Because telephones probably wouldn't exist yet. Um, Maybe? I guess they wouldn't, but the, he has, like, light bulbs. And they go to America, and I'm pretty sure they... Wait, I don't know. I don't know. Because I feel like all they do is write letters in this to each other. Oh, yeah, of course they do. But, like, his village in fucking... China isn't going to have a phone. I'm surprised they had, you know, as much as they did in his crap little village that's apparently been raided by warlords. It looked pretty good. Oh, is all I'm saying is his village. Well, they had, like, nine tigers there. It did. Mm. I was shocked with how many people turned up in this movie. It was, Yeah, it was one of those films that just kept having little cameo appearances. But it wasn't, way. like, aggressive about it. It wasn't, like... Hey, stop the movie, because here's Rob fucking Schneider now. You take it. It's kind of like, oh, there's Rob Schneider. Okay, okay, why is he here? Right. Because American. Yeah, because American. And he sounded like Beetlejuice. I don't know what that was about. He's like, hey, man. I'm like, hey, it's Beetlejuice. It could just be Michael Keaton dressed up as a (laughs) Rob Schneider type. That's Rob Schneider. The Americans turn up in America. The French appear in France and the, and the Austrians appear in Turkey exactly, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly where I was going <laughs> oh god any rollerblades away um 
This is the important scene. This is our inciting incident in which the bet has been placed. Do you think it's an even bet? Do you think it's a fair bet? Because it's like, all Jim Broadbent loses is his position, but, like, he doesn't lose all of his money. He doesn't have, like, a restriction placed upon him. It's not like, I get to be the head of the science, and you never enter politics again, and you also move out of your house. Well, I suppose the idea that um, Steve Coogan gains a certain sense of honour honor and nobility out of it yeah. would add to a... What's the word I'm looking for? Romantic or, or a glorified uh, reputation out of it. Whereas this guy's like, oh, not only did you have the easy side of the bet... You lost, so it's like, well, look who look who the fool is now. Yeah. Who will the history books write and say, your name equals fool? You, Kelvin, you. Kelvin. I did like the little jokes like um, Lord's, Lord um, um, Salisbury. It's like, you get... You, I'll name you, uh, I'll name this after you. And it's like naming things after people that we actually have Isn't now. Isn't Kelvin a unit of measurement of like heat or something? Yes. Yeah. 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 Or was that Calvin? I can't remember if it's Kelvin or Calvin, but yeah. It's some of, but I don't think he's supposed to be the man. Uh, I love the fact that this is the universe in which the Minister of Science is the second most powerful man, in, like the second most powerful person in England yeah. behind the Queen. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, where's the Prime Minister? Well, he was too busy, you know? Too busy. He doesn't know science, so, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, and, uh, now imagine Jim Broadbent's character being like, oh, yeah, yeah, and I'm the Prime Minister, but, but, head of science. <laughs> like, why not? Because you could, you know, why not, right? Like, I could be all of it. Because a Prime Minister can have, like, be a minister of something else, can't they, as well, right? Minister of women, education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember that? In Australian politics, Tony Abbott, one of the most sexist, behind-the-times leaders we've ever had, was also the minister for women. <laughs> that was great. And education as well, wasn't he? Like, he's fucking brilliant. And who would have guessed that women's stuff and education went down the toilet? Not I. No, no. Don't you like the fact that for the whole movie, Jackie Chan's character's name is Passport Two? <laughs> yeah, Passport Two was it pronounced? No, Passport Two. Passport Two. Passport Two. They say it like real quick. Says so yeah, Passport, Passport Two. Passport, Passport Two. Passport so in the original story, the, the oh Passport Two. Ah. His his equivalent is still called Passport Two, right? Yeah, I think does, so. Is, is, does that character have like a secret? Like, was that a name he made up as well? <laughs> I think their parents were just jerks. So that was their real name. Yeah, why not? You know, guys, okay. they're sharing a bath right now. Is that a bath? Yeah. Is it? I always thought it was a bath. Otherwise, what? It's in a bathroom. Is it? Yes. It's in a bathroom. I mean, it's a room that has a bathtub, I guess. Is that a bath? I thought that was, like, some kind of vat for his machine to pour into. But maybe it is a bathroom. I'm just looking at it, but I get just, just dis- distraught at the idea that he has a leather armchair in his bathroom. Maybe they hadn't invented the concept of bathrooms It's a bathroom because, look, there's the pet. I don't the think so. That looked like a teapot. Lauren's like, I know my Victorian era bathrooms! And they had leather armchairs in there, and they sat on them while they looked at their wristwatches. I gotta say, when I walked into this episode, I wasn't expecting bathroom gate. <laughs> Look at this! Is that a bathroom? I don't think so. There's no indication. I mean, the walls were blue, Ryan. So... Oh, well, back then, <laughs> blue and pink meant totally different colours, so... I mean, totally different things. Remember? Uh, look, I don't know. When I think bathrooms, I never really think pink. For girls? I mean, for... When I think bathrooms, I think white. <laughs> but why pink? How then? many? Uh, pink for girls. Well, that's blue like, for boys. That's, that's like what I thought you were public indicating. public toilets. I'm talking about, like, domestic bathrooms. Lauren, what colour is your bathroom? White. Okay, what colour is my bathroom? You've been there recently. White. white. What colour is your bathroom? The white tiles and blue painted wall. Okay. Good for you, buddy. So like, I, guess, I guess the white is... <laughs> so, so, wait, what I'm getting is... 
it's your bathroom that you're you're like yep all bathrooms are like your bathroom well i mean like the bathroom you think oh that's where you can do a bunch of stuff with water water you associate with blue blue so. i i know i totally understand your thought process but i just love the fact it's like bathrooms blue done nailed it it's like yeah but i think just white most of them are white in films most of them are white as well but we just missed out the introduction of one of the best characters in all of the film, which is Spud from Train Spotting, got a job as a policeman in Victoria, England. So. A corrupt police officer. Well, did Very they mention he was corrupt? Yes, yes. But did he redeem himself at the end? No. Yes, he did. A little bit. He fell down some stairs and they all laughed. And he also said, you did thing, and everyone was like... <gasps> Uh, I like the fact that that stuff gooped on him. He's like, eee, my brains! And then something really would have concaved his head into the point of his brains leaking out on the road, but he was fine. But he doesn't die. He's quite distressed the rest of the film. About what it, kind of hairstyle is that 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 guy has there? You know, that, that hairstyle the guy has where it's like shaved, but there's like enough at the back for a ponytail to be there. Like when I go to the barber, what do I ask for? With that. You say, can I have the cool? The cool? And they go, you, fine, easy. Oh, and, and, and then they go like this, Ryan, I, I, I can't give you a haircut that are the transition sequences in Around the World in 80 Days. It's impossible to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> they don't say that to we me. We are in Paris. That's why I'm different than you. Yeah, well... They also look at me and go, they tell some- Bartek this, but not all bathrooms are blue. They say something similar, just they don't call me Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, he invented wheels. He invented the wheels on the <laughs> suitcase of this guy. I, during my time watching this, was trying to figure out who my favourite character was. Yeah. But also, I was playing a game of who's Bartek's favourite character? Because this is a cavalcade of characters. This is one of those movies where it's just like little characters that you see once or twice, but they really make an impact. And to be honest, my favourite character is Jim Broadbent. He's just so over the top. I like him as a villain. Every time I cut back to him, I had a smile on my face. I couldn't help but say Jim Broadbent. Um... Lauren, did you have a favourite character at the end of this film? Mine's Steve Coogan, just because I can't stop staring at him in this. Oh, there you go. That's it. I had a guess of what Bartek's favourite character is. and uh... Honestly, I think I need the second viewing just to... Oh, okay. I... Because when you when I saw that guy, I'm like, oh, I forgot about this guy. I feel like there's a lot of characters I've forgotten about and I need to... You refresh. didn't forget about Rob Schneider, did you, though? Well, no, because every time he pops up, it's always like, oh... Here you are, uh, well, I know Bartek's favorite character. I wrote it in my notes. I said this is his favorite character, and if he says otherwise, he's a liar. Okay, which pressure's on. You want me to tell you now? May if it'll be more interesting, I guess. Tell me now. It's the captain of the boat at the end that they make into a plane. He is pretty. He cool. has to be your favorite character. He reminds, he reminds Without me of- a doubt. If you said otherwise, I would kick you out of this podcast <laughs> and tell you to rethink yourself because that's you know not the Bartek I know. You know what's great? When you brought up the concept of favorite characters, I was just thinking of everyone. For some reason, I didn't think of him. <laughs> There's but no then, nipples. But then when you mentioned him, I'm like, oh, he's a contender. You had me at you nipples. <laughs> Just, I feel like I've known many people like him in real life that had elements of this guy and he's a combination yeah, of Yeah, them. I love just... Teachers that I've had. We skipped and... ahead, but his moment of just going like... Ah! And then they just stop and, and Steve goes like... Wise words, wise <laughs> words. And just like fly off. I'm like, yep, this has got a weird, awkward humour that Barzak would love from a character like this where it's not actually <laughs> awkward, but it's just kind of like, what? Off kilter, that's it. Uh, here's our woman of the film. Um, you know she's the woman of the film because she smiles instantly at Steve Coogan, who's walking around saying all of this art's garbage. Yeah. But isn't Lauren smiling at Steve Coogan? <laughs> well, she's the girl of the podcast, so <laughs> there you go. There we go. She is the first girl to ever be on the podcast. So. Ever. Like, yeah. and the only one now. Like, from now on, it's only Lauren as the girl representation of Spin Polish. Every other woman we have is secretly a man in disguise. Oh, look, it's Van Gogh. Oh, look, it's this guy with a mustache. What a great mustache. Do you think you could grow a mustache like that, Bartek? Let me have another look at it. 
It's pretty. It's pretty on point, as the kids would say. Mm, I don't know if I could have the like the pointy. Yeah, the point thing coming. Maybe out. you gelled that shit. Mm, gel I that don't... shit. I would love to have something like that, but I don't know if I could do it. How about how about this woman in the background here holding her <laughs> glass of wine, acting? Could you do her? She was just acting a storm up in that sequence there. She was she was holding her glass of wine, but she was holding it at a weirder angle than what you would because she's like, oh no, I'm acting now. Well, Ryan, I'm an actor, so of course I can do that. You'd be this guy, though. Well, the, the, that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say, come here, my friends, and then they do. <laughs> Let's get him. Um, so this is a film that references lots of historical events, Easter eggs, little things, as well as making references to pieces of fiction along the way. Um, did you guys have any little favorite winks and nods it had within it? Like references to... Historical history? events or fiction... I like that they incorporated the Wright brothers. You like the fact that they were the Wilson brothers. <laughs> I'm happy that we finally have Luke Wilson on the show after talking about it for so long. He's my fa- <laughs> He's my favorite Wilson. Of the three? I don't remember the third one. The third one's actually the oldest one. There's a third one? Yeah. Luke really? Wilson's the youngest one. Is he? Yeah. Jeez. Yes. Owen Wilson's the middle one. The oldest one is named Andrew Wilson, but I don't really know him from anything. Are they like the American version of the Hemsworth brothers? They must be. Yeah, and I guess. Because when I look at Owen Wilson, one. I think, yeah, Chris. They were born like yeah. 64, 68, 71. No, well, Owen wishes he was born in 69. <laughs> I know Owen. Was, I know Owen. He was just a little too quick. That's what I try and tell him, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you like the fact that he, um the Wright brothers had their inventions stolen from our main characters. Yeah. Great. What about you, Lauren? Any little historical things? I oh. mean, we're going to have a little moment here in which they make a, a, oh, a famous work. painting. Yeah. Uh, so, But not like an iconically famous painting. It's not like, oh yeah, here's the Mona Lisa and I made I her like smile or some bullshit. Van, I like the fact that Van Gogh is here. Yeah. And it, 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 they're just... And when... Um, Coogan just like his art is terrible. He just t- does turns around and like, oh, what, what is this? Yeah, with his ear missing because yeah. he's already cut it off. So you like Van Gogh turning up? It made you happy. Mm-hmm. You like Van Gogh, do you, mm-hmm. as an artist, yes. or do you just like yes. him because that one episode of Doctor Who in which no, made everyone actually, cry? I actually like Van Gogh. I went and saw his exhibition in per- in Paris. In Paris. In Paris. Oh, Did you what like a that wanker. he cut his ear off? Hmm? Did you like that he cut his ear off? No. Did you like that he failed at killing himself so hard that when he shot himself, what was it? He shot himself in the fucking gut and died. It took him days to die because he couldn't just shoot himself in the head. What a legend. <laughs> now, you, look, can you imagine me that one arsehole who goes, oh, Van Gogh, fucking hate that guy. Like, in today, like, there are certain artists that it's like, they're beyond critique at this point, like Picasso and... Even Warhol and all of that, where it's like, you've got to make, it's like, you've got to have a fucking deploy, like a PhD to back up the fact that you don't, that, that you don't think Van Gogh's all that good. Can you imagine, like, Lauren, you come on here, it's like, actually, I hate Van Gogh, and here's why, and we just become the, here's why Van Gogh sucks podcast. So how many years, Ryan, before Roger Ebert's reviews are, you know, oh. untouchable? No, well, some people think they are already, but guess what? He's a hack. Uh, what did he think of this movie? Do we know? I, I don't know. So as soon as I mentioned Rodrigo, I'm like, oh, I should have looked it up, or else now it seems like I was I imagine up. he would have loved it, because he was a big fan of, um, of of Jackie Chan. I hope he loved it. I have been to this place. There is no potholes, can I just say. Lauren, were what? you there in the 19th century, though? No. There you go. But the potholes should still be there. No, Lauren... Things change. Sewage works may not be under this there now. This was technically 2004. No, Lauren, it's set in the 19th century. Don't you, you see know, them with their little umbrellas? You know what? Considering the fact that that pothole is something you can literally pick up, I'm, I'm surprised something you can pick up and put down in, in public space would still be there after so long. You'd think someone would steal it. Yes. Yes. And use it as a plate. <laughs> use as a plate. Yeah, I knew you were going to go somewhere with this because I was like, Bartek, you do know there are manhole covers that exist in the world that we are in today, right? 
uh, that you could take away if you wanted to. Oh, oh yes. One, I lady. think Lauren's favorite character, <laughs> to be honest. When I saw her, I'm like, oh, this character. <laughs> he stole my bag. <laughs> you know what's a... Oh, and Richard Branson? Yeah. One of the weirdest cameos? Like... Makes sense at the same time. Though. It does make sense, but it's kind of like, what made them say, yeah, let's get Richard Branson on the line and see if he wants to be in Around the World in 80 Days. And he was like... Hmm, let me see, I'm running my huge business and I'm one of the richest people in the fucking world. Oh yeah, I can squeeze in the time to maybe, be in Jackie Chan's film Around the World in 80 Days. Maybe he thought they were offering him a trip around the world that takes Can we days. also just say how... And he's like, I could do it in 80 minutes. <laughs> can we also say how stupid Steve Coogan's character is? Because he puts all of his money in a bag. But he makes it around the world in 79 days, so you can't really call him stupid. Uh, and uh, don't women do that? Uh, sexist there, Lauren. You know, just because a guy does it, you're calling him stupid. But yeah, women but he has put like money tens in... of thousands of dollars in his bag. Yeah, but where else is he supposed to put it? Um, in a bank book. No, because then you put that bank book in your bag and that just gets stolen. Mm. So, you know, put just in, saying, Lauren. his big hat. Why didn't he put it in his waistcoat? Yeah. Lauren, men have pockets. You know, he could have put it in a pocket. Those are pretty good things to have. But then Jackie Chan shows that maybe that's not a good idea because he loses his trousers in this fight sequence at the end. So, you know, because the statue wanted to grab his ass. I love that this is one of these movies where the director said to the editor, hey, you know transitions in films? Have you seen that film Zoom by (laughs) chance? Could we do it like that? In which we make graphics and objects wink and smile and, 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 you know, the world looked like it was made on MS Paint and spin around. Like, they like, don't go as far as to have, oh, like, wait, logos wait, wait. of the film. <laughs> no. Conveniently <laughs> placed flower bags. No, it's... Look, there's other flower bags. It's so placed well. It's not because Jackie Chan's so short that if he jumped off that he would have hurt himself. It's <laughs> maybe, not that at all. Maybe the Assassin's Creed. Oh, wait. Oh! <laughs> you know what I liked about this movie? There's blood in it. Like, when people fall... And crack their nose. Blood's coming out of her nose just then. And then, um... That's her hair. No, it was... No, it was blood. <laughs> and then, um... You, uh, you and... You and... Bremo. Oh, you're pointing at me when you were saying you this. And, like, what did you I do? You and Bremo, who's Spud from Trainspotting, who's the policeman. Inspector when he, Fix, was it? Yeah. When he gets his nose smashed in every time, blood is always pouring out of that motherfucker. And it's so good. So, parents, warning, there is gore in this film. Uh, parents, warning, there is blood in this film. And if you've got a girl who's developing, you might have to explain what blood coming out of there means. And this film might raise that conversation. And you might not be ready for that. So, just in case. Lauren rolled her eyes so hard that the film itself said, what a neat reference this little sequence is. Where you, yeah, There he is. Um, yeah, Moulin Rouge in reference there. Um, yeah, this is this is a brilliant little film, and I'm so sad that Bartek missed it the first time round. But you got to see it this time round, and uh, here's a question: Would you visit this 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 film again? Yeah, if it was on television. Thanks, Bartek. Now, Lauren, what do you think? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> She didn't even try to do a voice <laughs> <laughs> because she didn't know she was answering your question. Oh, and she fainted well, again I, this one. I did mention earlier that I am an actor. Actor. Oh, sure. act. Hey, how many black French women were there in the Victorian era? Lots? I don't know. I need an answer, Lauren. You went there, apparently. You know that there's no manhole for... cover there, huh? The, 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 I went to contemporary Paris, not... 18th century, 19th I like how she's all being like snooty. She's like, I went to temporary Perry. <laughs> Fuck off, Lauren. <laughs> like, you know that we say Paris with an is at the end. You know, also, come on. Paris. Yeah. Also, could I, Paris. The, Paris. Uh, could I point out the elephant in the room of that scene right there? Jackie Chan's pants. No, no, no. None of us. Ryan, you and I, we are not French men, right? No, we are Polish. 
Do Frenchmen, instead of penises, have leaves on their crotch? I think they do. Okay. I haven't seen a French man's willy, but I have seen a French man's leaf. I see. And yeah. I, I have to assume from that piece of information if, if that we, that's what you get. If we have French male listeners... Could you give us an answer on this? Yeah, could you let us know? Also, question, what do French women have down there? Do they have clams? Maybe they have full trees, I don't know, man. Full trees! <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a great answer. Okay. Uh, fan art, that's someone, please. Thank you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and it will be art. Uh, it will be art. Make the leaves the colour of the French flag, and it will be great. So that's blue, white, and red? Yeah, yeah, but that's... don't mix that around in the is wrong that the, fashion. Is that the order left to right? I don't know, blue, I'm white, not red. fucking French. Wait, I can hold on. I barely remember what the Zip. poll is. Oh, yes, you're not. I'm I'll not pull French. Up your pants, you, now. you pull up my pants. The Same joke, the joke is I was checking if he had a leaf, and he didn't. You know, this had one of my favourite little moments in which Steve... Co- is, this is it, yeah, where Steve Coogan storms off and he's like, that's it! And he comes back in and he's being, like, you know, manhandled by these two guys yeah, and we get, there's a brief explanation of he annoyed them. And then she's like, if I stay with you, if I can get them to make it go faster, then I can stay with you. And they're like, okay. And then, like, two seconds pass. The train's instantly fast and we get no explanation on how <laughs> she did it. So I'm left with blowjobs as the answer. Or as oh. the Polish know it, ice cream. Um, <laughs> oh, or just, you know, a flush of the tits and you'd be right. No, not that. Not as happy as they were. No, flush of the ankles. We've got to think of this. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Steve Coogan, ankles. Steve Coogan did see a bit of her calf. It was even above the ankle. No, calf. No. And he was like... Now let me test to see if you guys are actually smart. Who did she show? Whatever she showed to the the the, the two the two coal shoveling guys, right? But how would that make the train go faster? Because they shoveled the coal faster. I th- well no, because they had to come and you know thank her. I think that she showed it to the train itself, and it was like oh <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 just chug it, chug it, chug it. It's a way out. That's actually a good answer, Bartek. You know, mm-hmm. you, you really thought this film through. I... See, your logic was that she persuaded them to make it faster, whereas my logic was, well, she had to come up with an idea to make it go faster. Yes, you are a smart, gentle man. I am smart, but I do thank you guys for giving me this alternate perspective of what could have been going on. Can we talk about her paintings? Ryan, we can talk about her paintings mm. till the day we die. Well, Lauren... Do you like her in paintings? Or art? They're very whimsical. They are impressionistic. Mm. And Steve Coogan did say it did not leave much of an impression on him. So, <laughs> I liked her paintings except for one thing. You know the, the painting we get to see of hers? The artwork we get to see of hers where it's like the man flying? Mm. You know, turning into a phoenix-like creature or whatever and he's flying? It's pretty good, except for she's got this fucking stupid duck in the corner. <laughs> did you notice this? Yes, I did. And, I, and then, you know what? We saw her just there drawing in her book, and she's doing, like, the sun in the center and all these stuff happening around, and there's the duck again. And I really thought, oh, we're going to get an explanation of why she draws ducks. Like, like, oh, I had a pet duck when I was young, or I really like ducks, or, or she would see a duck, and then she would draw that, and then she's like, I always incorporate animals into my art or maybe, something maybe something it's, but it's just like oh it's just a duck maybe it's like her signature or her self insert mm. like when you see the duck that's me putting myself there now I'll give a bit of uh, clarity to the issue I haven't read the original book so maybe there's a duck character in there that's really essential and that's like an easter egg easter egg wink and nod to the well, source funny material enough, the duck's name was Ed Ed you know it's a TV show I never got as a kid. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Well, you see, Ryan. Everyone wanted, loved that show. It was just what I didn't get in. It's because they wanted twenty-five cents. What do you mean? They wanted twenty-five cents so they can buy the go- the the jawbreaker. Yeah, uh, as a show, Ed, Ed, and Eddie was that one car- one of those cartoon shows that I just never got into. I was like, I'd watch it and be like, eh, eh. And everyone, everyone, every guy my age loved that. Here's the moment. Show. Here is the ankle. It's and calf. calf. Is this it's the, more calf. Is this where Ed shows the ankle? No, but look at him. He's smiling. Lauren's smiling. <laughs> 
because she's the girl and girls only smile at Steve Coogan. Oh, <laughs> my God. I've got a cigar. <laughs> the guy in the background. My Lord. Um, so have you guys had to take a long train journey across no. a distance? It doesn't have to be cross countries or anything. I went from England to Scotland on train. Uh, so like two hour trip? No, it was longer than that. It was a whole day trip. Fucking what? England's like not that huge. Is day it? trip, day trip. Fuck, trains must suck. Um, but uh, now was that modern day England or <gasps> it oh, was modern, modern okay. day England? What about you? Because you know I'm a time traveler. You know you can do some confusion. Yeah. Mm. What about you? Hermione did time travel. In the, mm. Yeah. Don't you in Harry Potter when you have to time travel? Isn't it like you have to fucking wind up a yeah. watch like a like a gajillion the, the time times? Turner, like yeah. by the time that you wind it up, four years have passed already. So when you want to travel four years into the past, you've just traveled to when you started winding up the watch. <laughs> like it's so stupid. Sorry, Harry Potter, you're stupid. I'm just saying it now. J.K. Rowling's a hack. Fuck you. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm a better writer than you, JK. Come at me. Um, but the answer to the question you asked, Ryan, is I've never, I've never really taken a train that's anywhere longer than a trip to some other part of the Melbourne metropolitan area. Oh, really? So when you've gone to Europe or Poland, you've never done the trains? No, I've, I've, whenever I've had to travel between countries, it's always been through dry, driving. Ah, okay. My dad, he he loves his driving. Yes, yeah, so I've had to take distances. I've had to take the train from my hometown to Melbourne, and that's like over twenty four hours. Ah, uh, like nonstop. Prince Happy. No, that's got a layover because it goes from Melbourne to Sydney, and then you have like. I've always wanted. Time off. I've always wanted to go on a long train ride, but it's, there's never been anywhere I've wanted to go. It's all right. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's all right. Prince Happy. We've on purposely avoided talking about Prince Happy until he well, we've alluded that he's arrived. Austrian. Yes, he's Austrian. It's Hitler. Uh, <laughs> weird casting choice for the filmmakers mm. to make that they got the actual real life Hitler. But you know, Hitler liked acting. He liked art. This character likes art. Of course, we're joking. This is the first is this the first time we've had this star on our show you know what right i think it is arnold schwarzenegger everybody yeah this was the last film he this is one of the last films if not the last film he did before he retired from acting to become governor Mm -hmm. and what a career that was it turned out really well for him being governor um and here he is having I don't know what his choices are as an actor in this, but he's made them. This is the one where you go, okay, look, Rob Schneider comes in this film as a homeless man, fine. Jim Broadbent plays a stuffy old Englishman, fine. Arnold Schwarzenegger as a Turkish prince? Okay, you gotta explain this one to me. Yeah, what is the director of The Waterboy thinking? (laughs) <laughs> this is the director of The Waterboy. Yep, and The Wedding Singer. <laughs> oh, come on, The Wedding Singer's good. Um, <laughs> the Wedding Singer is good. Uh, 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 it's, it's, it's better than Big Daddy, which, I mean, anything's better than Big Daddy, but, you know, like, <laughs> that's just my point of view. Fuck, Jack and Jill is better than Big Daddy, just saying. Um, Lauren, Schwarzenegger's in this film with a statue of himself. Yes. Uh... Are you a Schwarzenegger fan? No, not really. Have you seen I've any avo- of his movies? I've, I've kind of avoided his films. So you've never seen a Schwarzenegger movie? No, I like twins. I love all the ones, like, twins. The ones that I grew up in in, like, the 90s. Junior. Junior. Probably the worst of the films he's ever done. I think Kindergarten Cop. Isn't that Kindergarten one? Cop's yeah. one of his best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a doomer. Yeah. Terminator? Detective John Kimball. No, I avoid it. It stops at the Terminator. Oh, okay, the look. Stuff. I'm going to make the controversial statement of watch Terminator 2, definitely. Um, And 1. Yeah, 1's alright. No, 1 is great. 1 is great. 1 is great. But I feel like sometimes with people, if they haven't watched the first Terminator at a certain point, they go to it and it feels so old hat. Like, it doesn't age as well. But it's actually a really good film if you give it it a chance. No, no, it's a classic. I just think Terminator 2 is a superior film. 
It definitely is. Spirited. Watch Terminator 2. It's really good. I grew up on Terminator 2, and then I watched Terminator 1, so it's kind of like that oh, okay. too. I watched it in order, so yeah. Because Terminator 2 was always on TV. Always yeah, on TV. I remember TV. On, on flights I've taken, they've always had Terminator 2 as a choice of a movie to watch. Terminator 1's an R-rated movie, but yeah. Terminator 2 well, is Terminator 1's more of a horror film, whereas Terminator 2 is this kind of like... But, yeah, but Terminator 2 has way more violence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's also fun. You should watch Terminator 2. You haven't watched enough Schwarzenegger. Have you watched Jingle All The Way? His Christmas movie. See, that one I haven't seen. Ah, oh, it has Anakin Skywalker in it. Well, I know what it has. As his son. I know what it has, it, but I haven't it seen has the film. It has Phil too. Hartman Phil in Hartman. it. <laughs> as the sleazy next door neighbor who wants to sleep with his wife. This is the moment. This is the. That the Kogan. Kogan. Kogan? This is the moment that the Kogan <laughs> steps out of the Kogan. <laughs> this is the moment in which you <laughs> fell in love with Steve Kogan? No, no, this is the moment he falls in love with Monique and is like getting all jealous in the hot tub. No, yeah. Well, he's already in love with her because he ogled her ankles. Yeah. Didn't you see that, Lauren? Oh, yeah. I swear you were pointing that out a moment ago. <laughs> does, you know, does, does... I love Schwarzenegger's hair in this. When I think yeah. Turkish... When I think Turkish prince, I think Weird Al and my <laughs> hair from three years yeah. ago. <laughs> like, what's going on, Schwarzenegger? Somehow he always he kind of reminds me of Richard Simmons a bit too. Oh yeah, because he's wearing a jumpsuit. Mm. It is I, Richard Simmons. Yes, I I, I want to hear you Arnold know, Schwarzenegger. Wife, wife number seven. He's mm-hmm. very fit guy, but I also want to hear him do like a fitness video for a big group like Richard Simmons would do. Oh, he does have fitness videos, but like not the well, type not, not Richard like, Simmons well, would do, where it's like, come like on guys, stuff, smack yeah. your ass and let's get going. When I think of Richard Simmons, I think of him being heavily prominent in the film The Nutty Professor with Eddie Murphy. I haven't seen the Eddie Murphy version. Well, his character's very fat, and he watches Richard Simmons videos a lot. Mm. Richard Simmons is crazy, by the way, so... Woo! Oh, bye-bye! He's also fantastic. Oh, no, they're touching his statue, which was the one thing he asked them not to do. No! Look... I don't understand why you don't want to give Schwarzenegger a chance. He's a limited range actor, but he's really fun. Mm. Every role he's in is a blast. He speaks very clearly in this film, too. Mm. Props to him for that. It's because he's older and he's becoming governor. Mm. So he also is trying to do an accent, I feel. like I feel like he's trying to do a royal accent. You know, yeah. you know royal accents where you speak like this. It's a bit of a like artistic kind of touch to it, too. Artistic? Well, you know, because he's playing the music, he loves, oh. he's got all this art in his palace. Yes. And he's kind of comes across like a bit sensitive, even though he's also a douche. Is he Power supposed to? Do you think he's supposed to be Muslim? Uh, well, were the Ottomans, like, were Ottomans Muslim? Aren't they? I, At this point? I don't know too much about the Ottoman Empire. At this point, yeah, I want to say they are. It's Turkey. Turkey's, you know, a um, Muslim country now, and then. I'm pretty sure. I think he's supposed I've never to be. Really thought about what I think he's supposed is. to be Muslim. Why I'm, I'm questioning this is maybe I'm not up to date, but like I'm just like, yeah, I'm just looking at him. I'm going, that doesn't look like a Muslim prince to me. But maybe, maybe I'm the fool, and maybe the filmmaker who made the Water Boy and um, the Wedding Singer knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And oh, here he is, Breaking Bad guy again. Out of the cabinet of bad guys, did you have a favorite? These guys, these old stuffy white guys. Uh, of the two sitting on the couch, I like the one on the right. That one, the fat, oh, real the, fat the one. Fat yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. He he was the he was the I one. I watched his fitness video. He would. He was the one that spoke like this. Yeah. I like the general. Uh, the big fat general. You know that's standing. The one that's standing behind uh, Broadbent. Yeah. yeah. He was great. I loved. There's a bit later, and I didn't know if it was scripted or not, where he blew the whistle right into Jim Broadbent's ear. And yeah. Jim Broadbent, I don't know, it felt like he wasn't acting. He's like, wow, why did you do that? That was so stupid. I will like, say this. The, the general, he's got the best face, I reckon. Obviously. You mean Chin? <laughs> well, Chin's part of the face. <laughs> he is also featured on do you, Pie Ryan, in the do Sky. You, do you think someone else is has... He? Yeah. He's not the detective. No, in he's, not, Sky, he's not the detective. Because that's, um, what's his name? Harry Potter's yes, uncle. uncle 
Vernon. Yes. Richard Griffiths. Yes, yes, Who's Richard dead. Richard yeah. yeah. Well, when I saw these... He ate th- too many pies in the sky. <laughs> when I saw these three, I, I asked myself, I wonder if these people are Richard Griffiths, but the more I looked, I was like, no, I don't think so. We've had him on the show before, I'm pretty sure. I'm dead sure we have. I think he was in the Avengers, I want to say. If it was yeah. right. And I always think of him in um, one of the Naked Gun movies as, like... Oh yeah, he was the the professor or something or yeah, Bronheimer or something. Yeah, the yeah. second one where he was. Yeah. yeah, I remember when we had him on the show. I asked, "Was he in Naked Gun too?" And you said, "Yes." No, oh, yeah, yeah. So he's, whatever he's a... that was, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> plot twist: It was actually Thunderpants, probably. <laughs> no, I biggest more... plot twist ever: It was Sleepwalkers, and he's one of the I cat feel, people. I feel like it would have been in the last half year that we've seen him. It is Jackie Chan. You know what I love? Everyone in the world speaks English. <laughs> but it makes sense. It makes sense. Here's why. Until they get to China, everyone speaks English because all the places they're going are English colonies. colonies. Well, I, so English is something that's enforced upon them. Well, ironically, one of the first people we see in France doesn't speak English. That is true because the French fucking hate the English. Mm. They like and the then, Polish, though. And then they go to Turkey and they all speak English, which is an, an English well, it's colony. Prince either. Happy taught them English. Prince Happy Ali Ababa. They speak English in that film too, right? Oh, in our version, they do. In Aladdin. In Aladdin. Um, so you know, I like the fact that they they do decide to dress up as women and they make that a very bold point throughout the mm. movie yeah even though it's like just basically a sari or something over their normal clothes hey they're wearing a dress yeah, no no yeah. they're wearing the full women's outfits like the dresses and everything not just the the wrap or whatever like they but gave aren't they, but aren't they wearing their regular clothes no, no they no. gave them away to a bunch oh you didn't see that <laughs> you're gonna love that there's a little shot there's a little movie. shot where the police are asking these women who are dressed in all of their clothes mm-hmm. These Indian women, and it's like, there's this Indian woman I dressed think, as Steve Coogan, and I, I just went I like this. That. I'm not up to date with cultural stuff of India, but I'm pretty sure a woman in this time period <laughs> dressing in a man's suit like that, especially an English man's suit, wouldn't have gone down well. But she I, I, I did like how you brought up this not up to date in a film that's already a period piece. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. Also, this, this film, India's... You know, controlled by the British. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, but the British might not allow that anyway. I guess that's a justification for why they speak English here. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. Like, the English would enforce it. But, like, in Turkey and in France, they wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, Turkey, because Prince Happy is being, you know, a well, host well, and he's a dignitary. Yeah. But in France, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, and in China, they've got their dynasty. Yeah, so exactly. In China, it's mainly spoken in, what, Chinese? Yeah, Qing Dynasty. Is that the dynasty at the time? Yeah, because I think the trivia mm. said so. All right. Absolute. I'm only Thank really you. familiar with the post Han dynasty myself. Is it? They're doing the full salute set. Ah, oh, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> dressed in their clothes. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah, I remember this now. Yeah, yeah, and then they're dressed in dresses the whole time, and then they go to the Himalayas, and now they've got new clothes. Because mm. uh, the Himalayas does that to you, you know? It's cold there. Have you been to the Himalayas? Have you guys been no. to any Asian countries? No. Yep. Bardock, enlighten us. Yes. Where did you go? I've been to South India. I've been to Japan for an hour. Um, and I, I won't list the ones I've just been to airports to, but those two would be the big ones that I've actually gone out there to. Oh, yes. And South India. Had oh, a... Singapore, of course. How could you say no to Singapore? Uh, South India, um, mm-hmm. fun time? Yeah, I was uh, doing renovations at an orphanage. Oh, yes, I think you've talked about this before on yeah, the show. end of year 12. And did you... Everyone went to schoolies and I went to India. Were you good at it? I mean, they were pretty happy with what I did. They gave me a, like, plastic plate trophy thing. Imagine if they weren't, though. Like, as soon as he left, <laughs> they were like, we're gonna start this from fucking scratch again, because that one guy... Well, it was a group of, like, 13 people, so... Oh, he's one of Bartek's other favourite characters. I felt like this guy, Ooh. the big guy. I don't know, he's just one of those goons, like, favourite goon characters. You know how sometimes you see a goon mm. that has no character to them, but they bring a character to it? Like, this guy felt like that for me, and I felt like Bart's... Is this the guy that chained them together? Yes. 
Oh, well, I, I remember there was some good slapstick with this guy. Yeah, yeah like I guess well, he didn't, he'd be a high contender. And and you know just how big he is, but he has this goofy voice. Goofy voice. Uh, now this is great. You know what I like about the sequence, Lauren. Mm-hmm. They work together. Yes. Because in a normal movie. In another movie, he would still be trying to arrest him or doing something stupid or get knocked out and cause Jackie Chan more problems. But in this, he actually works with him as best as he could. Like, he still gets hurt and injured and yeah. all of that, but he doesn't actually slow Jackie Chan down too much. Like, yes, this is stuff is happening, but once they actually start to work together, they, they actually start to kick some ass. And I actually kind of want... Around the world in 80 Days 2, in which is these two travelling together? Well, I guess that is kind of a trope of the whole, oh, we accidentally got chained together thing, where even if it's two people that hate each other, they kind of have to learn to get along. Like, I think Pokemon did it with Meowth and Pikachu. I love that from you. Sorry, so I'm thinking of one of the most famous films of its time, the Defiant ones, where it's Sidney Poitier and Tony Curtis chained Mm. together, and it's about, you know, racial, big, you know, racial indignities and whatever, and they learn to... What's... Be friends with one another, no, and that's like it's no the Pikachu and Meowth. It's no Pikachu and Meowth, though. <laughs> that's what I love. I hear you talking, and I'm like, oh, he's going to bring up the Defiant one, surely, because that's like where this idea is most famous from. But you're like Pikachu and Meowth. I'm like classic parts. It'll be like. To be fair, though, Ryan, if you were to tell a lay person about this concept, you'd probably have to pick something that they'd know. If I have to pick a what person? Lay person, sure. normal person, average person. Yeah, I mean, sure. You go up to the Pope, you're going to tell him about Sidney Poitier or Pikachu or Mouth? Uh, well, I have to tell him about God, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Did you, you got to the... teach the Pope about God. I think I heard about this the other day. I think the Pope decided that hell, hell isn't doesn't real. exist or something. Yeah, hell doesn't exist. And the Jew. I, mean, you see, I can see you hear the Jews in the background being like, we've been saying this from the fucking beginning. Wasn't that a thing of like the Vatican were denying that he said that? Yeah, but I don't think he denied that he said that. <laughs> I'd have to look. I'd have to. If that's true, the Pope said hell isn't real. That just means we're one step closer as Catholics to being the Jews again, because the Jews don't believe in hell either. I feel like if the Pope, if if the Pope legitimately said that, that would probably calm a lot of people down. Yeah, but then, it, but then it would anger thing. most Catholics, because a lot of Catholics are fire and hellstone. Yeah, I, I, I don't like those Catholics. The, con- they suck. the concept of wanting hell to exist that's kind of ironic I guess. yeah watch out not me brains as lauren <laughs> said while she watched I, this i actually did not like... me brains she scooped not him back in brains. as best as she could and not now she brains. loves her thing. I, I did like the touch of how he took that uh advice input into, into and he was like oh yeah i shouldn't do that he's actually helping me what a nice guy like i like you know like about jake did he feels sorry for the policeman, like like in the inspector. What was it fix? Yeah, fix. Thing? Yeah, he feels kind of bad for him because he keeps accidentally injuring him. Like he always keeps trying to save him, but he keeps fucking it up somehow. Something goes wrong. Yeah, especially in this scene, where as we said, they bonded like Pikachu and Meowth. <laughs> he's licking his <laughs> lips weird. I don't know why he's doing that. <laughs> Get him! They would have got him straight away and went, Oh, Inspector Finks, uh, Fix, we know it's you. And he was like, They're over there! But, you know, it's a film. We can't do that, you know? Uh, Lauren, if you had to travel around the world in 80 days, yes. what would be the top five locations you would want to visit? Well, I'd have to go to London. London! London. I'd go to Sweden. Sweden. Sweden? How many is that? Two. That's two. Uh, Japan. 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 I like um, the rest of England. Fuck that. Just London. I, I don't want to go to the rest of England. The rest of England sucks. Visit all the countries of the UK, like Ireland. Yeah, Northern Ireland. Don't you get me started on that again. <laughs> um, so, so you, you got... Australia? I go to Sydney. Okay. I mean, you live in Australia, but okay. Go uh, on. Um, I have one more. Antarctica. There we go. Wow. Some of those were good options for me. Bartek, you're a man of the world. If you had to go around the world in 80 days and you had only the top five, you had to choose five locations you'd definitely want to go to, what five? Japan would definitely be one of them. I, I feel like I'd want to focus more on the Asian countries. I know you would. Because Europe, you know, it's the few I've been to. and They're all the same. They're all they? sort of the same, I guess. Um, So Japan... Well, 
Honestly, I'm not really too interested in going around the world. But you're forced to. But I'm forced to. I've made a bet with you that you have to go (laughs) around the world. And if you don't... If if you do, you you get to be the host, the the the, the big host of the show, and I've already I, done that though. Yeah, hold on, and if I win, yeah, you have to stop being Polish forever, give up your living accommodations, and and you're never allowed the podcast again. Yeah, I know it's a big ask, yeah, but, but like that's the that's the way. And you're you not going to send assassins after me, are you? Oh, 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 oh no! <laughs> no, I'm going to send warlords after you. Completely different thing. I'm not paying them. I, I maybe another one would be northern India because I haven't really been there. Yeah. Um. What about what about if place? I had to, if I had to go to Europe, maybe then I'd go to something in Europe that would interest me. Maybe Italy. Italy. That's a nice one that I haven't so you've about. got like how many have we got? Japan. That's three. Th- yeah, true. Japan, northern India, Italy. Uh, if I had to go to the Amer- North America, I'd probably want to go to Canada. Canada, that's four. S- and South America. Oh, I haven't thought of Africa either. Fuck Africa is what you're saying deep down. Mm. If I had to go to Africa, maybe Egypt. Egypt, it's a nice turbulent time in Egypt as always. <laughs> so that's five. And if I had to go to South America, I mean. Brazil would probably be the one on my mind. Brazil? Ooh la la. Great choices, everyone. All warm countries, I think. Screw New Zealand in the option of all of those countries, because even in this movie they said they didn't get to go to New Zealand and he sounded disappointed about it. New Zealand, actually, that sounds alright as well. Bartek? Mm. You know what's really great? Mm. You wanted a character arc there. Because at the start of the journey, you weren't too sure what countries you wanted to go to. Now, you just can't stop listing off countries. Yeah, I've listed seven. You're like, well, I mean, I pointed out, like, if I had to go to every continent, then... Yeah, there's a lot of continents. Lauren chose Antarctica, the barren wasteland. But good on you, Lauren. Like... Well, apparently there's a fire station in Antarctica. <laughs> How many fires do they have? I don't know, but like I was playing, <laughs> a um, lot. I was playing Jackbox with my friends a few years ago, and like that was one of the questions of like which of these is in Antarctica, and fire station apparently was the answer. Mm. Right. Uh, if I have to do this, I have to do this. I, I, well, I'm leaving from Australia. Mm. Let's let's go to South America first, and I would go to um, uh, uh, um, Ecuador mm-hmm. to visit our good friend Claudia. Yeah, that's a good who's one. on the show and then I'd travel up to Canada as well mm-hmm. and then I'd scoot all the way over to Russia I'd love to see the build, the I love the Russian architecture I think it's fascinating to me not to be nitpicky but that's kind of going backwards if you want to go around the world ah uh, shut up yeah I know <laughs> get rid of the around the world thing just what countries you want to go to. yeah uh, shut up <laughs> if I'm going from Australia mm. I'd be going around <laughs> I mean, around, like, one half of the world. You don't know where I'm going after Russia. <laughs> Alright, let's imagine that all the countries are in a straight line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I go to Russia, that's three, right? Yes, and then uh, I, I'd probably go over to Spain, to have a good old time in Spain. That's a good one. And then I'd probably stop off at Ireland, just to get some more architecture in, because I love the churches and the cobbles and, and the... All of that. I mean, miserable looking place, but fun looking. So, so your Asian is the Russia one. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I didn't choose Africa either. I mean, I'm Soz, Africa. I guess it's just not that interesting. But Lauren really took us by surprise. Antarctica. Well, she right. said Australia, so. <laughs> yeah, she said the country that she lives in. But then she had to clarify Sydney, as if she's never been there and or never will be there in her lifetime. Well, me, I can guarantee the countries I just listed off, I'll probably never get there. Have you left Australia at all? No. Nope. It's all right. You can breathe in every country. It's fine. <laughs> same thing. Same old, same old. I mean, I you know, I can get severe food poisoning in every can country. We just, uh, can I just say something quickly about um, um, Jackie Chan's mum in this? She's, I love her. She's quite old. I love her first scene where she was, like, happy that her son's come home and then she just, like, walked away while still ranting about how happy she was. (laughs) And now she's just getting fucking hammered. (laughs) But, you know, she can can hold her own because Steve Coogan can't. He's a teetotaler. So, Lauren... Is that how it's pronounced? What, teetotaler? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never heard it said out loud, so... Yeah, I think so. 
Yeah. Oh, tea, 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 tea? I don't know. Now you got me questioning it. Look, dude, who cares? Look, I wouldn't be able to tell either way. I've always thought it was. And then like your dad has to talk really fast. Tea <laughs> or something. Look, Bartek, in the end, death awaits us all, and we can't keep up with the etiquettes of the ever changing world. So, in I the mean, end, I don't can't know. we bring back, you know, the public execution? I'm just saying. I don't know. Look, I'm, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> you Laura and I are both that thing, and we should probably know how to pronounce it. That's all. I'm looking at Lauren. Whose eyebrow wiggled when bring back public executions, and she's like, "Oh, that got me going." <laughs> this looks like the world's most comfortable bed, but also looks like a bed that does not fit a human the size of Steve Coogan. It is for Asian people because it is a little bed. Look how little that bed is. Well, you know, I'm not being racist. Lauren looked at me like little people. I'm like, no, Lauren. Chinese people are a lot shorter than Steve Coogan at his impressive five eleven. I don't know how, Steve Coo- how tall Steve Coogan is. I took a guess. There were some guys playing Mahjong earlier that were laughing at him. Um, we've talked about Jackie Chan quite a lot on our show before. We liked blah, blah, blah. But what about Steve Coogan? Let's let's talk. I talked briefly about how I like him in Hot Fuzz and I like when he turns up and things. Do we know him from much? I know him more from like the movies he's done recently where he travelled with, what's his name? Rob Brydon. No, I um... Or was it Ben Miller? Do no, you know, no, it's, it's Rob with... Brydon, right? Where they go? Where they go on the road trips. Together. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. eat foods. Yeah, yeah, Rob yeah, Brydon. Yeah. Him and Ben Miller look a lot alike, and they get I that know. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the the what is it? The trips to Rome, trip mm-hmm. to France, and it's just like if you don't know about it, like, there's this TV show with uh, Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon where they play themselves, but the characters of themselves. And there's a TV show of this as well, and they make movies of this where it's just them going around to places, eating food eating gorgeous food and just bitching about each other and bitching about showbiz. But it sounds like very mundane, but it's actually really funny and charming. It's kind of hard to explain. It's just like they're playing these weird warped versions of themselves. And Steve Coogan is known for doing impressions. He's very good at impressions. But Rob Brydon is um better at impressions than he <laughs> is. And he doesn't like the fact that he's better at impressions than he is. And... All of that, so yeah, you know him from from that. Is that yeah. is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. His trips, uh, yeah. Bartek, Steve Coogan. Nah, have, haven't experienced the Coogs. I might have seen him in things. I, I don't really. I'm not really too up on. There's a few all movies. The actors there's and a few movies of his that I ha- that I want to cover in the future. There's one where I can't remember what it is. I think it's called The Inspector or something, where he plays like a ticket inspector or something who My kind favorite inspector. who who gets involved in an in uncovering an art heist or something or other uh or the guard or something like that and then i know him primarily for the legendary character he is famous for playing which is alan partridge alan partridge is a very famous uh, character he plays it's one of those characters that has numerous amounts of tv shows that he's done as that character uh, you know character shows following that character and shows with that character as a supporting character in the show and he's done stand-up shows as that character it's what he's most famous for and he's kind of like a a british disc jockey character like a old school british radio character like radio presenter character and he's very very funny very very dry human is one of those characters where he's very hard to get into him because you have to understand the certain kind of comedic context that the character is trying to take on. But once you figure it out, you, 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 you just enter that sweet spot. And it's just, he's such an arrogant little character. He has his own movie. I think he has a movie or two. And that's kind of what I know Steve Coogan for. Ryan, you, you talked over the Liar Revealed event. Oh, no. You know what I love about the Liar Revealed event is that I hate it. Uh, <laughs> except for in this movie it works because mm. it's a fundamental part of the actual story it's not like you remember in Shrek you remember watching Shrek right as a kid and I, I think I can say this for most people who grew up on Shrek and when you have to rewatch Shrek there comes that point in Shrek where Fiona's talking to Donkey, I'm pretty sure yeah, and Shrek part. standing outside and he, he only hears like an out of context part of the conversation and he runs off and, and they have a feuding relationship for like 10 minutes and it slows the entire film down. And then, 
and then it's, he thinks she's a liar, and then, oh no, he finds out that she's not a liar. It's more, yeah, more of a misunderstanding kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, in context of him, he thinks it's a liar reveal kind of situation, and then da 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 This is also a misunderstanding, liar reveal, da 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 but it actually matters. Oh, that's my favourite line, by the way. Just... I'm not afraid of you and your silly bracelet. And then the knife comes out. I was like, okay, I take it back. It's not silly. And just how <laughs> self-serious mm. he is. Like, another comedian would have delivered that line with, like, an inflection of fear in the voice, but he, he's stone-faced about it. He's, he's like, he's, I'm all right, it's not He's silly. a very good, uh, snarky British man reacting to other cultures. Yes, he is. At no point do you feel like he's actually enjoyed any of the cultures, his experience, but it's not like he has contempt for them. It's just kind of like, not like how he would be. He's a bit neutral. No, no, it's more, he's too busy. Yeah. I've got to get from here to here to here to here. It's like, we've all been traveling before. Sometimes you just can't appreciate the actual traveling because you're trying to get to the destination. Yeah, like even, even when he's, you know, suggested like, oh, we can see Thomas Edison. He's like, oh, there's not really time, I, I guess. I guess. I mean, I'd like to tell him about my whistle modification. When they were in the stocks there, and he asked uh, Lao Xing, Jackie Chan, if uh, there was anything he hadn't lied about, uh, and he made the thing about, oh, I can sing, I, I would have probably, if I was a scriptwriter, I probably would have gone with uh, the fact that his mother is Chinese. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you nailed that. No, the singing part worked. And it's, you know, leading up to a gag later when they're in the desert. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it, a weird gag, mm. but an interesting gag. Hey, he's got Jackie Chan doing action, and I gotta say, we covered the tuxedo together, us three. The action, is it better in this movie or in the tuxedo? Well, I remember one of the criticisms about the tuxedo is that it was a lot of special effects, whereas in this one, it's very clearly actually happening. And Physical. They've even got some of like the names... Of you know martial arts choreography in the in the credits of Sammo Hung I think his name mm-hmm. was and and Jackie Chan doing the choreography yeah, as well I think a guy named Daniel something as well yeah Daniel I don't know he had a short last name but they they have actual like martial arts choreographers that do actual like martial arts films in Hong Kong and stuff like that yeah so definitely it's a lot more played straight in this but also you've got the whole comedic kind of angle that Jackie Chan tends to do mm. in the American releases. Not in his own releases as well. Yeah, because he was an executive producer on this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. the thing is, there's a great video online about the art of Jackie Chan's action stylings, but, like, this film, this film, you know, he gets a lot, there's a lot of flack between the difference between the, you know, the Hong Kong Jackie Chan action and the American ones, because the editing is far different. Like, the editing in these movies are a lot quicker cut, so you kind of don't get the flow of everything as well. And the, you know, the cinematography doesn't kind of focus on the action the same way that he does in his Hong Kong films. But I feel like this film does it pretty well. Like, it does a lot of the Jackie Chan things, like getting props, things that are in the location, using them, having Jackie Chan have something, um, you know, like, like, uh, uh, getting, uh, having to fight off multiple things at the same time, but not just, like, dudes. He has to stop the stocks falling on the ground and then grab a blade and smack someone with it and then put the blade Try down. Try not and... to let the hot air balloon get away from him. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, and, or, like, how he disarms people with random little objects, like the stool, he manages to get the bracelets mm. off the guy and flings them away and then smacks them on the ass with the stool to put him down and all that kind of stuff he's like and also goofy face mm. Jackie Chan knows yeah, you have to be goofy in these and like mm. like when he on the rope he burns his hands and he's like oh and then later on he does the same thing when he grabs the boiling hot um pot, pot and there's like oh and there's like and then he but then he uses the pot to kick it at other people Jackie Chan really even in the American movies like this one understands the art of action and how you can still infuse awesome action and even in a serious tone with some comedic elements in there that don't ruin anything. It actually adds something else. It's actually like if you were to if you were a critic of say slapstick comedy, it would be really justified in this because there's so much action. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Lauren. Yes. Mm. You big action fan? Not so much. Come on. No. But in drama, they ask, what is your action? And then you have to answer. 
Yeah, Lauren. <laughs> you have to answer that now. And then you answer, and they're like, no, 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 what is your action? But come on, if you had to pick a favourite action movie or action star, if you had to pick one, of an action star, who's your favourite? Come on. You're on the hot seat now. Um, I like James Bond, so I'm going to have to say any of the James Bond movies. You're right, you're right, right. Timothy Dalton it is. Mm. <laughs> um, James Bond. Mm-hmm. Mm, interesting. I'm not sure what I'd answer. Well, I'm a big fan of John Wick, so I'd like to choose John Wick as an answer because Keanu Reeves also does his own stunts. Uh, which is quite neat. Uh, Out of the big action stars, I was always a big Bruce Willis fan for the most part. Like, I like the Die Hard movies for the most part, like, up to the first three. Because Bruce Willis was really good at playing the schlubby blue-collar everyman who does get hurt. While, you know, other action stars... Jackie Chan does that too. Like, Jackie Chan does the he gets hurt thing. While people like Stallone and Schwarzenegger, they don't get hurt. They're impossible. They're 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 impervious to pain. Mm. Or or what was that great line that um the general had for uh, Jim Broadbent in this when Jim Broadbent said, "You said the Bank of England was impregnable, impenetrable, impenetrable," and he's like, "I said impregnable." He's like, "It's the same thing." <laughs> that would be something that you and I would have as banter. Like I'd be that if that would be me and you. I'd be Jim Broadbent. And you're like, oh, he's such a prick. I was like, Jesus. I'm so so not into action. Come on. What about Mad Max Fury Road? That changed I everybody's I mind. Seen that. I you haven't, haven't seen, seen that. Huh? I haven't even seen the original Mad Max. It's okay, you don't have to watch the original Mad Max to understand Mad Max Fury Road. Cause Those I, are literally the only two I've seen of Mad Max. You haven't seen Mad Max 2? I haven't seen 2 or Beyond Thunderdome. Ooh, 2 was 2 for till Mad Max Fury Road came out was considered THE Mad Max film yeah, to watch. Yeah, I've heard that. That's, it is, that's you the, should check it out. Yeah, that's the one in America that's called just The Road Warrior, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's the one with Lord Humongous who's a um, big muscular man in a jock strap wearing a hockey mask mm. uh, and is pretty good. You should watch the second Mad Max because there's a great sequence in which um, Mad Max is teamed up with a helicopter pilot whose name is like Helicopter Guy because, you know, most characters don't get names in Mad yeah. Max movies. And he's flying around on his little gyrocopter, that's what he's and he's throwing snakes at people from his gyrocopter. So you have like this intense car chase sequence with these trucks and whatever, which is what Mad Max Fury Road basically Mad Max Fury Road is basically the Road Warrior, but ten times better. Uh, but but it still is important to watch the Road Warrior sometimes. And he's just throwing fucking snakes at people and they're like, ah and crash their cars and shit, and it's pretty great. Because, you know, it was a film made in the early 80s, so it wasn't special effects. This guy's throwing snakes at people. (laughs) Because you have shots of him in the camera where it's him above throwing snakes, and you know they're real snakes being thrown at real people. Ryan. Brilliant. We're looking at The Great Wall, and that... It's not that great. It brings to mind a certain film that had action in it. Yes, you're right. (laughs) Yes, you're right. That epic Australian ad about the father having to describe the Great Wall of China to his son. Remember that? <laughs> Why they keep the rabbits out? Great, great action in that ad. No, no, you're talking about the much acclaimed Matt Damon movie, right? Yes. Matt Damon. Yes, that's how he would have said it with his accent. Uh, the great French actor Matt Damon. <laughs> I can really Isn't that believe funny? it really was. Yeah, it's yeah. just how cynical you sound. <laughs> it's not like anyone oh has an God. Lawrence Lawrence dying. <laughs> ah yes. Maybe I should be a French British actor, actor. <laughs> Matt Demon. <laughs> I should be a snarky <laughs> British actor. <laughs> you it was just a cynical tone in your voice. It's like it's like you hate Matt Damon. <laughs> I don't, I'm not Jimmy Kimmel. No, you're not Jimmy Kimmel. He hates Matt Damon, but loves him. Just for the record, I did literally spit out water. She did a spit take, guys. <laughs> it's okay. If you if you were here for our last episode, there was one of the three of us laughed a lot and had to get up and lean against uh, I won't wall. name names. <laughs> it was me! I didn't name a name, so I'm clean out, out of that. Uh-oh. 
this is Lauren's character. If Lauren had to play a character in the movie, <laughs> you would play prostitute who steals his money. Yes, I would. You would? I'd You'd... also provide him services and then I'm... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think if you were cast in this movie, you would be cast as that character? Yes. Okay, yes. Bartek, who do you think you'd be cast as if you were in this movie? Well, I can't say that character because Lauren's... No, you... Lauren. Lauren, Lauren's... Um... Bartek would be the captain. He would be the captain, 100% <laughs> with the no nipples. And I feel... I feel like he'd be Rob Schneider. Me? Mm. Me? Nah. I was going to say Jim Broadbent. No! <laughs> <laughs> you come in here with your dandy radio waves. Oh, he's good. I do love the fact that Rob Schneider's in this and he's competent. Like, we've had him in three films now, is it? Like, Bedtime is... Stories, Big Stan, and this? I feel like there might be one more, but those are definitely the oh. ones that come to mind. Surf Ninjas. <laughs> oh, the first time we met. <laughs> the <laughs> best of the ninja films. I guess... Surf Ninjas. <laughs> is this the... But this is the second time we've had him as a homeless man. Uh, Was he a homeless man in Bedtime Stories, or was he just a thief? He, I, he also played an Indian in Bedtime Stories. Yeah, he played... That, well, that was a dream, so it's all right. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, he looked homeless to me, didn't he? That's just Rob Schneider. <laughs> oh, I like this guy. I'd actually he be this guy. I'd be that guy. <laughs> he was anything but in Big Stan. He had a big house. Yeah, and then prison was his home, so... Mm. Uh... Rob Schneider. Wasn't there a trivia point that there was another actor that was originally going to have this role? Yeah. Some comedian? Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's me! I'm a homeless man! I don't know if this director would ever work with Adam Sandler. <laughs> I'm Adam Sandler! I don't give a rat's ass about quality! Sing his song from Big Stan. Dooby dooby! Dooby 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 I'm Adam. Look at that fucking duck! Like, what's going on there? I think it's a duck, but it has, like, turkey feathers at the end, but it's got, like, a duck's body, and it, maybe it's a quail. Let's agree it's a quail. Do you like the running I gag? Like the, I like the word quail. Do you like the recurring gag in this film that homeless men are afraid of flying men? Mm-hmm. Bird men. Flying men. Or bird... Oh, you said both, yeah. But, yeah, the second one said, oh, no, the bird men are coming. The birds, the birds. Mm. Birdman! No, it looks like it's like a, it's a turkey with a hand as a tail. It's grabbing the sky back and saying, I own you! <laughs> You're my friend now! I think do, it's art. Do you think behind his head where it says the Nolan brothers is a reference to Christopher Nolan and his brother that I don't know if he has one, but if he does, maybe his name is... Magnus Nolan? <laughs> Wasn't there a trivia point that said that one of these things behind him was like a reference to laxatives? Yeah, the Nolan Brothers movies sure do give me laxative effects. When I saw Interstellar, shit my pants. It's like, whoa, Matthew McConaughey! <laughs> shit my pants. When I saw The Dark Knight Rises, and it was fucking great, and how awful it was in periods of it, I shit my pants. You shit your pants. You weren't born in the shit pants. You merely adopted them. I'm in a stadium. I'm in a stadium. I love in The Dark Knight Rises that a man manages to outrun an exploding football field and not hear the sound. So when he turned around, he was really surprised that the football field is exploded. What? I liked how anticlimactically Bane died and no one acknowledged it. Oh, you mean he died so flippantly and then the movie just kind of proceeded to go on? Yeah, it was like, eh! Hit by a motorcycle, the end. By a really lame interpretation of Catwoman? Yeah, yeah. You know what I really loved about The Dark Knight Rises? It had a really great moment that it could have had that would have left film fans wondering for years to come, except for Christopher Nolan decided now nah, fucking force feed the audience because I already did ambiguous with Inception, or which is, ending? which is yeah, Alfred is sitting in that little diner that he described early on that yeah. one day he'd like to sit there and see Bruce happy, mm. and it has that great shot of him 
looking over and he's like smiling with teary eyes and we the audience if you left it that that shot could interpret that as him seeing Bruce or him being happy finally or something rather like ambiguous but then it cuts to Bruce Wayne with Catwoman and he smiles back and you're just like wow all ambiguity right. anything gone oh day 66 somewhere <laughs> in the desert not to be confused with the dessert everyone's favorite mm. so Lauren if you were stuck in the desert not to be confused with dessert oh sorry aren't their tires meant to be wooden so why is the wood bent what do you Just, mean? Like, what would they have? It would be snap. It would oh, snap. it's a metal tire. Are we sure? Yes, it's metal with a wooden out casing. See, the wood's broken. This is Lauren. It's it's hard to explain wheels, did, but did, maybe they ran <laughs> over a rock. Did that editing choice there confuse you guys? No. It made me clearly understand that um, Jackie Chan's somewhere else in the desert. Mm, so you didn't interpret it as, like, a cut to the future where he comes back and faints oh. in front of them. Oh, no. No, 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 not at all. Good, me neither. <laughs> you did, didn't you, though? <laughs> no, because this film was fantastic. Yeah, well, hey, no, the film can still be fantastic, but you misinterpret its genius for one moment. That's okay, Bartek, because many people so saying... misinterpreted this film's genius by casting the Wilson brothers as brothers. So does this mean that I can stop lying in this episode? can start telling the truth about how much you love this film. This film is the greatest. I know I said that earlier, but that just goes to show that I was only lying about one thing. Now, could you say it like Owen Wilson does in this movie? Look, I, I, I've stopped lying, but now that you know that, you know, uh, I guess that just means I wasn't lying at all. Oh, wow. Now, say wow. It like, now you say it like Luke Wilson. Hey, guys, it's me. <laughs> yeah. Luke Wilson, look. I was having this conversation the other day about the Wilsons. I don't know why, but I was talking about Owen Wilson. I'm like, Owen Wilson plays Owen Wilson, right? We all, but no one else can do it. When Owen Wilson, look, the best Owen Wilson role to date is still Hansel oh, from yeah. Zoolander, yeah. right? Because it captures all the stuff of Owen Wilson in a bottle. I don't know about Zoolander two, but I'll I know Zoolander, Zoolander one. Sorry. He's great. Luke Wilson, I feel like, is an actual good actor because he's always a bit different in every role I see him in. Mm. Like, like him as Kelso's older brother in that '70s show. He's kind of got this like um mysterious air about him. Like, like mm. a part of you goes, "Oh, this guy's not a good guy," but he doesn't do anything necessarily to necessitate that as a thing really in that 70s show as a character yeah, like you, you, kinda... couldn't, you couldn't prosecute him for his character mm, but he gives you something about him where you go ooh I don't ooh I don't trust this guy but not like enough to go evil you just go eh, there's something off about him but like he's which, good which is something that like frustrates Eric because it's like oh what do I pin on this guy and then you have him in this in which he's playing insecure and then you have him in probably one of his most iconic roles Idiocracy yeah Definitely. In which he's playing like a dumb guy, but you see, he doesn't play it like Owen would. Owen would, Owen would play it too, like, oh wow, well, oh wee. It, well, he's unremarkable. Yeah, average guy. Yeah, yeah, averagey, schlubby guy. Well, yeah. Owen would play it a bit more special. He would try to make it a bit more of a funnier role, rather. Than, mm. yeah. While while Luke Wilson makes it seem like a thankless role, but he really is the glue of the film. And how would Andrew Wilson play it? Andrew would play it the best. He would have gotten an Oscar. I actually don't know what Andrew Wilson looks like. I mean, I probably have seen him because I've seen the, um, I think it's Royal Tenenbaums, where it's like the three brothers, the playing I, brothers, I'm yeah, pretty I sure. Yeah, I don't know him too. When I went to his Wikipedia page, I remember he had a lot of facial hair. I reckon if you had to get one of the brothers to play a biker, he'd probably be the one. Oh, wow. Are you a big fan of the Wilson bros? Laws. I watched Zoolander 2 the other day. Why? Because it was on Netflix and there was nothing on television. Well, you could have messaged your friend Ryan and I would have given you a good selection of things that you could watch. I have good taste. Mm -hmm. You could have watched Around the World in 80 Days. I did, but I ended up watching that. There you go. Ah, it's because I recommended it. Well, that's why I watched it. I, well, you didn't recommend it. You told me. I told you you had to. And yeah. if you didn't, you would have suffered pain of death. Oh, here's our villainess <laughs> we haven't talked about at length or at all, really. Tiny little Asian... Tiny little Chinese warlord lady. General Fang, I think her name was. Fang or Feng? Feng. I thought it was Fang. 
thing. F E or F A? F E. F E. Gotta love that hairstyle though. And that eye makeup. Oh yeah, obviously the eye makeup's impeccable, but the hair? Can you get your hair like that, Lauren? No. I don't have enough hair to make you. Do that. you think she has enough hair? No. Well there you go, Lauren. If she can do it, so <laughs> can you. Ryan, real talk, could you stop? Talking about all these body issues we have, me not being able to grow a moustache and Lauren's lack of hair. hair, Lauren's bald. I mean, right. The only um, thing you said I'm about yourself is that She's Arnold Schwarzenegger bald. had hair that you already used to have. Yeah, well, the, oh, I can do that. I could. You're just jealous that I'm impervious to body shame. Well, I wouldn't be jealous if you weren't bringing this stuff up. It's not like I'm bringing it out of nowhere. You're the one that brings it up. <laughs> but not out of nowhere, out of the film brings this conversation yeah, but about. But he didn't have to tug at our hearts. <laughs> what heart? Lauren's just looking <laughs> indifferent. She's just like, I'm bold and proud. Leave me alone. I watched Black Panther and there were bold women in that and I felt empowered. Ryan, As a white lady, Ryan, I felt like you it was were good ridiculing to shave my head. her. You were ridiculing her when she said she wanted to go to Sydney and Antarctica. You do not understand. Lauren. I don't understand her travel location choices. <laughs> I agree. I do agree on that. And who's... Not to say that anyone's at fault, but whose fault is that that you don't understand? Oh, I think it's society's fault. I never thought of it that way. Lauren, yeah. you are so weird, I don't get you. <laughs> now you got stabbed. <laughs> is what I'd say if I believed you, Ryan. Hey, Jackie Chan gets stabbed quite a lot in this fight sequence. Yeah. Like, three or four times. Is this the one where he gets stabbed in the bum? Yes, he gets stabbed in the arm. We just saw he got stabbed in the bum and he got stabbed in the gut. He's unstoppable. He, well, that's very funny. Because he is unstoppable. He's Jackie Chan. And that reminds me of, again, on Hot Fuzz. Remember in Hot Fuzz? There's a bit in Hot Fuzz where... Um, where dumbass Nick Frost is looking at these DVDs that you find in a $2 bin and there's a Jackie Chan movie where he's like a cop. There's like some cop movie and he's like... Rush Hour. No, no, no. It's another one. It's like... Rush Hour 2. Meet the cop who can't be stopped. Oh, and he just starts <laughs> chuckling. It's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just the blurb on the back. I can't remember what it was, but it's a real movie. Uh, get this joke. He sneezes and then, oh, legs shoot out. Mm -hmm. Lauren? I got that first go. Did you get it the second go, though? Yes. The director yes. of The Waterboy is proud of you. Thank you. Do you like The Waterboy? Because that film also has Kathy Bates in it. As his I ma. I don't remember too much about it, but I remember liking it. I, guess. I liked it, too. I, I was actually one of the earlier Adam Sandler films I watched. I grew up on that film, and I liked it, but I liked um, the best character in that film. Is that the one that had Henry Wilkner in it? Wilco? Wilco? What's his last name? Winkler. Winkler, sorry. I was literally going to say, it had, one of my favourite characters in that is Henry Winkler. Oh, who, okay, there we go. Who is the Fonz from Happy Days. Yes, Who yes. plays Adam Sandler's dad and or mentor and or paternal figure a lot, like... He appears literally in one scene in Little Nicky as himself as they shoot bees at him. And he's like, sorry, Mr. Winkler. And he's like, Aah! And then he's in Click, probably the best one of the Adam Sandler movies that he appears in as his dad. And he's like, no, poor Henry Winkler. And, um, you know, if he appeared in this movie as Jackie Chan's dad, I wouldn't have complained. And if this movie was directed by Ron Howard, I wouldn't have complained. Well, I mean, if Henry Will... Winkler. 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 If Henry Winkler could play a Frenchman, then that would be fine. I like how you want to say Wilkinson. I don't know. I feel like that's what you No, I want to say Wilkler. Who the fuck is I don't know. I'm just adding an L there for some reason. I mean, there is an L in the name, but like not Should there. I put it too early, I mean. You're kidding. Ooh, have you ever wanted to have a shoe with a blade in it? No. Are no. you sure? Yeah. Are you 100%? Because I have. No, because I'm really ticklish, so if someone tickles my feet... You, what, you clank them together like the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> and then a blade you, will come out. Do you oft uh, get into fits of giggles when you interact with blades? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. The question is, what type of blade? The one in your shoe. <laughs> Any kind? <laughs> like the hand? Like, I don't... No, no, the film Blade with Wesley Snipes. <laughs> she gets in fits and giggles. 
when she interacts with... You know Wesley Snipes in the Blade movies is fucking great? He's, he was so crazy. Like, I love... Just even in context and out of context, have you ever seen the Blade movie? I think when we were studying yeah. vampires in year 11... Yeah. Watch bits of it. In the first Blade movie, he has, like, his big final kick-ass line. I can't remember what it is. It's something like, You can't go ice skating up a hill without skates, motherfucker. And he's just like, What the fuck? <laughs> like, like nobody knows. It's something like, something really yeah. stupid like that. Not go ice skating at all, but yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. It's <laughs> something like, Yeah, I agree. <laughs> And oh, the rules, the rules save His them. little manual. Of user rules. Manual. His, little... His little user manual. It says rules. I know, but it's in his manual. But guess it's what? They get stabbed by... I've always wanted a shoe with a blade on it, but I always wanted... On, on Star Trek, the next generation, Klingons have boots with spiky horns on the t- toes of their shoes <laughs> that they use to fucking kick you and hurt you. And I've always wanted those boots because they look cool and I want to hurt people. I'm kidding. I don't want to hurt anyone. I do, though. In, uh, in the fourth Metal Gear Solid... I yeah. Didn't, I didn't say Metal Gear Solid 4, because you would have thought that I was bringing up 2. Um, Vamp yeah. appears in Metal Gear Solid 4 as well, who was in 2, and he has um, these kind of things on his feet where he could... Uh, stab you. Stab you. And there's one part where he, like, gets on top of, I think, Raiden's lying on the ground. He's, like, doing this, like, twirl on him and... Obviously, it looks very painful, but also kind of silly. Right, and so, Lauren. Yes. When you watch this film, flamenco dance, not for this yeah. show. Yes, on Thursday. Yes. I saw it on Friday. <laughs> Did you come to any realization as to why this film isn't as beloved as it should be? It's kind of one of those forgotten gems. It's just, it's just, I think it's because it's one of the many, 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 many Jackie Chan films. And because a lot of the actors back then weren't as well known. I think that's pretty much it. So, an overabundance of Jackie Chan movies drowned this one. Yes, in the period that they were made. Ah, here he is. Bartek's character. His favourite character, without a doubt. Yeah, it would have to be. Every line he, he delivers me, was weirdly he, delivered. He reminds me so much of one of my media teachers. Yes. I I like we were less left with the, this, and we are supposed to interpret <laughs> nipples, but, like, I don't know, until Jackie Chan... And also, my, the my, yeah, introduction, my, he just flashed his body to everyone. Yeah, my immediate like, reaction would be like, oh, he's got a scar or, like, a shark's bit out part of his stomach. Or but something. then Jackie Chan grabbed his breasts... And then I knew it was nipples. Were you oh. turned on when he grabbed his breast? Jackie Chan? Yeah. S- yes, I was turned on very much so. Okay, cool. Uh, you got to feel sorry for our poor inspector here. He's come back. Yeah, I thought he was going to like break down in this scene, but no, it was just like a uh, justification uh, I, to throw him out. I really love the fact that the ministers thought that he travelled faster <laughs> around the world in 80 days. It is a good point. And if he didn't say anything, he could have convinced them that he did, and that he would have got a record. Yeah. That would have been amazing, actually. That would have been wonderful. It does go to show that if if the person travelling around the world did have the support of the second most powerful British force, they could have probably got in way less than 79 days. As oh, yeah. Has. Like, well, this is day 73? Yes. So, who who knows how much faster it could have gone? I always think of that episode of Blackadder. I always thought they were going to burn their clothes and just be naked on the ship. That's where I was going when I was watching this the first time. Like, ah. On Thursday, I was like... They're gonna oh, burn. I thought when you were like to, a child, they're, you were they're thinking willing, They're willing to burn their shoes. Why well, don't just burn all their clothes? Because the clothes won't do as well as shoes. Cause I'd imagine it'd be cold shoes. out in the ocean, right? I like how the, their story ends with them not knowing how they're getting back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lauren, I like that you wanted to see the captain's no nipples. <laughs> That's what you're telling me. You want to see his butt cheeks and nakedness. I'd, I'd watch a film if if there was like a Lauren character on this ship who every time <laughs> she, she would like make input into an idea would involve stripping of some sort. That would be, <laughs> that'd be a funny gag. Guys, I think that we should strip. And then they'll be like, <laughs> Lauren. 
And then there's no. like one time where it's and actually it, a really good idea. It's, it, that, that's what we call the third act. But then, where but, it saves the whole entire But they don't group. want to admit it, so they kind of like think up a shitter idea. Yeah, and yeah. it's their downfall. And then, and then she saves them by burning her bra and declaring <laughs> feminism. <laughs> and then Jermaine Greer was born. And the curse was put on the rest of the world. You had me at the nipples. Yes, I did. Thank you. I was quoting the film. What no. a good commentary I am providing. Hey, you know what the woman's doing during all of this? Painting. Painting. <laughs> she can't help them because she's a woman. It wouldn't make sense for her in the time period to know how to master an axe. Master the master. Master. Master the master. Master the master, yeah. I mean, master the master was the captain with the no nipples. In all seriousness, though, we... Seriousness, no? In all seriousness, no, you got to... English is not my first language. You've got to, uh, sorry, my name is Matt Damon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to appreciate art. No, I do. And when the English saw the flying machine, they also went, I look at that artistic expressionism. Is that impressionism? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a homeless man who's afraid of birdmen. Birdmen! Um, they really appreciated the artistic merit of hers, but is the bird supposed to be a duck? <laughs> because she's obsessed with ducks. I don't know what it is. Is yeah, it because I, I think right now she's thinking more about fucks. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was good, Bartek. Thank you. It's Matt. Thank you. <laughs> Matt de Mon. That was good. I'm proud of you. If we could replace Matt Damon in every movie with Matt Damon, <laughs> and he's got like um that TV show Keeping Up Appearances yes. in which her last okay. name's Bucket, Bucket but, but she's always like, pronouncing no, no, it bouquet. bouquet. It's bouquet. It's not Target. It's Target. I fucking hate those <laughs> e- idiots who call it Target. You come to me and I you say, "Oh no, people legitimately okay. call it Target," and I'm like, "You idiots." It's Get out of get out of my fucking house! Why are you in here telling me where to go to Target? That's not a place. It's like when Lauren was calling it Paris earlier, <laughs> just to show us that she's been there before. You know, you don't hear bards at calling Poland in his Polish name. You know, all the time. Polska. Yeah, you don't hear him going. Oh yeah, we are, we are from Polska. You know, like, we don't hear him going. Like, he goes Poland because he knows the context of where we are. Don't you, Bartek? That's exactly it. Not Polska. <laughs> or as I know it, Alright, here we go. They're about to fly. You sound so disappointed. Fly. Come on. Well, I... She's telling the truth, Ryan. When was the first time you went flying and how did you feel? <laughs> well, this movie's about I someone... I when I was six months old. I don't have any memory of it. Why were you flying when you were six months old? Because my parents decided to take me to Europe. When you were six months old? Yes. Oh, that must have been a fucking nightmare for the rest of the passengers. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there, where, where? I'm going to Paris. I'm going to Paris. Where, where? Why does that man go one sleeve? <laughs> lamb chop, lamb chop, lamb chop, lamb chop. <laughs> Ryan, a man who's never. Well, you've been on planes. I've guess, been on fucking. You haven't been on international flights, though. I like. My man who's. Oh, well, he has been on planes. That was the direct question. You've been on Tiger Airlines. Mmm. <laughs> The first time I had to fly a plane was to come down, come down to Melbourne. So that was like ten years You're a big ago. Boy. I was fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, sorry. I was thinking when you moved to Melbourne. No, I was fourteen, and I had a fun time. I loved the momentum, the the feeling of vibration in your chest and your sternum when the plane is like just going off and just landing. Uh, so good. But I take you. Do you first remember plane. your first planey? No, I would have been around Lauren's age. Oh, before. so you were like, where, where, I'm going to Paris, where? Well, no, I was going to Polska, Ryan. Oh, where, no, I actually where, wasn't going to Paris. read this, it's in Polish, you know how to read the Polish too. And where? I wasn't going to Paris, I was going to Holland. No, you're going to Paris, we know this. Uh, <laughs> I was, oh, John Cleese. 
the random cameo of the film, I guess. How did yeah. I not notice that was John Cleese the first time? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you do. I think it's because I was looking at the other guy. Yeah, well, John Cleese wasn't, like, taking up the screen. He's not like, it's me, John Cleese, I'm going to Paris. You know, he's like, it's me, John Cleese, and I'm in the film. I'm having a fun time, and I'm glad to be in the film. I, I can't remember. Have we had John Cleese appear on our show? Feels right. I mean, we've had a few of the other Monty Python... Well... Eric Idle, you mean? Sorry, I was thinking of when we did, um... Bend It Like Beckham, and you were saying that the mum of, um... Yeah, Grace, Grayson said the mum looked like Michael Palin in drag, yeah. yeah. No, we've had, um... <laughs> we've had, uh... Eric Idle on a few yeah. times now. I can't remember if we've had... yeah. Yes. Um... Dudley Do-Right and 102 Dalmatians. 102 Dalmatians... Uh, here we go. Is he going to make it? You know, I love Jim Broadbent, who knows that it's only been 79 days, is still working on the basis that this is the 80th day and that they have to stop him immediately right now because, obviously, if he gets on the steps, he wins. But it's like he's treating it like, oh, no, he, he we got to make sure we stop him in the next five minutes. Mm. Well, and yeah, but the reality that he's not aware of is oh, even great shot. worse. Great shot. That was a great shot there. No one's firing a gun. What are you talking about? Uh, well, that's something. Why didn't Jim Broadbent just grab out a gun? And shoot them. Yeah. Oh, he fell over. Oh! It's a good shot. It was. That's what I'm saying. Like, those were... These... All these close-up shots of him screaming. No, I was talking about uh, hypothetical gunshot. Oh. Uh, uh, that, that, that... My band name. That's actually a good band name. <laughs> hypothetical gunshot. And then you actually have a gun. That's your we- instrument. Mm. There's a picture of this old sound, um, sound, uh, sound effect group in the 1920s for radios, and like there's ones you know banging on garbage cans and whatever. But then there's just one guy holding a gun, mm. like that's his sound effect he's playing with. It's just an actual gun. Now Jim Broadbent's here to teach you that he's we're, a bad guy. We're the Ac- Royal Academy of Science. We don't need to prove anything. It's very, <gasps> very much. Uh, this is the war room kind of. Mm, yes. There's no fighting here. Yes, Jim Broadbent, great actor. He's very good at playing heroes, villains, comedic. Like he plays a very diverse group of individuals. You know, Hot Fuzz. He was the kindly I father love- who's the villain in this. He's the pompous guy as a villain. I love him in uh, Moulin Rouge. Yeah, I hate Moulin Rouge. It was a fiery passion, but he's good in Moulin yeah, Rouge. Yeah. Um, I fucking detest... Um, Not detest, I just don't like Moulin Rouge. Uh, I don't have enough anger towards it, because it at least does have a good version of Roxanne. So I'll give it a tick in that regard. But it wastes you and McGregor. Wastes him. Yes. You gotta agree on that. Yes, Ewan McGregor is completely McGregor. wasted in that movie, though. He could have done a lot more singing. He's not even singing. He's just, you know, it's really. You've seen Moulin Rouge, Bartek? Once. Okay, here's one of the weirdest things in Moulin Rouge. They, you know, they use real songs. Like they don't have any real songs of their own. They use already existing songs. Yeah, love. They have the. They have the. Um, the love. Uh, Somewhat may. No, no, the, the the love melody where they go oh, yeah, through like elephant love melody. Yeah, they go through like a million love songs in a very short time. The one of the ones that they end on is "Heroes" by David Bowie, which is very interesting because you wouldn't necessarily put that at the top of the list of iconic love songs, and if anything, even list that as just a love song <laughs> necessarily. It's like, and then just made me sit down and I realized David Bowie doesn't do romance. Songs. The queen. Uh, this whole sequence is just him saying, Oh, I get to act now. Oh, here she is. You know, Kathy Bates is one of those actresses that you respect so much due to a great performance of her career, which is Misery. Even if you haven't seen it, you know of its effect of her in that film, her Oscar winning performance. But She's just some actress that you just look at her and she just commands respect. And some people may not Basically, know Basically, she's just scary. You know? No, I wouldn't even say scary. <laughs> After watching American Horror Story, like, she's scary. Okay, but Ryan, <laughs> Misery, why, why are you bringing her up when the Queen of England is on screen? Well, that's Kathy Bates. That's the Queen of England. Played by Kathy Bates. No, it's the Queen of England. But 
<laughs> so there's that guy. <laughs> Did you see the painting of her earlier in the film? It was her, Kathy Bates. Yeah, it's the Queen of England. But m- maybe Kathy Bates is the Queen of England. <gasps> But yeah, Kathy Bates, for a lot of people, she's known for a lot of things. You know, Misery being one of her most iconic. Well, Misery is an uh, emotion. Yeah. But there's a film as well. And of course, uh, some people know from American Horror Story, I guess. She plays a few different kind of characters in that. Doesn't she yeah. kind of play like a cowardly yeah. racist in one of them? Mm-hmm. And all of that. So, But, you know, sometimes she plays a loving, sweet, gentle type. And in this movie, she's playing just a real aloof queen victoria like you know this is actually a very interesting interpretation of queen victoria because usually you think queen victoria is really stern harsh you know like really really you don't fuck around but in this she's like you have place to bet you better not lose Ooh. and all like she's like very aloof not very good with the uh, tropes of the british royalty no but she's breaking the mold I remember last christmas we were playing celebrity heads at the family christmas dinner and i got i think Prince Philip or something. Oh, so you got given he's a racist. I don't know, but when I deduced that I was a member of the royal family, I'm like, I don't know any of these people. What do I say? And I just randomly said names until I got it right. Ah, well, that's okay, Bartek, because they know you. My uncle told me, are you living under a rock? You might be. You do live in in Australia, which is a commonwealth country in which the monarchy are ever present in our lives. He insulted my rock. That's all I'm saying. Dwayne, we're sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Raj, it's like, who's Dwayne? Oh, The Rock. Yeah. The Rock. Uh, Steve Coogan is happy. He's got the girl, Lauren. Aren't you happy you got the girl and the Jackie Chan? Yes. And Queen Victoria got a little hug too. <laughs> if you had to hug a historical figure... Just a hug, nothing else. <laughs> You're not even allowed to say hi or anything. Yeah. Who would you hug? Audrey Hepburn, but we all know why. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> leaned in and just give me such a pained expression of, no, I don't know why. I have no idea why. Why? Why? Go back and watch episode 190 of Millionaire Hot Seat last year and you'll know why. Is it because she made you win money? Yes. As an answer? Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, did you say we all know why? Yeah, we all know okay. why. <laughs> you guys at home, you know Lauren. You know why. Uh, What's she, his name? Eddie, Eddie's listening to this Eddie podcast. Maguire. Eddie Maguire. Of course I do. <laughs> Eddie Maguire's like, lock it in. <laughs> uh, Bartek, historical figure, if you had to hug one. Mm. Nothing else, just hug. You're not even allowed to say hi, nothing. Just hug. There'll probably be no consequences if I pick Jesus. He'll probably accept it. If I pick Hitler, you know, that'd probably be a problem. Yeah, he'll be like, FILTHY POLAK! And then smack you down some stairs. Well, The Rock would... Steve Coogan does not look like he's a good kisser. Sorry. Uh, she's actually the terrible kisser. She's French. True. And the English are known for their good kissing skills. It's the French that suck. Oh, I love the song at the end. Yeah, it's really good. That's sung by the cast except for Jackie Chan. Um, Isn't it? Doesn't it also have uh, parts that are sung by like certain high schools? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her, the French lady, singing it in Finch. Okay. The race is won. Yes, it is Schwarzenegger. Um, If I had to choose a historical figure to hug, hmm. I want to hug Nero. Just hug Nero? Yeah, hug it out and say, dude. The one who liked singing? And stomping on his pregnant wife's belly until she died? Yeah. I would want to hug him and say, dude, don't do that. But I can't say that. I'm just allowed to hug. And he'll know. He'll know what it means. And then Roman Empire wouldn't have been burnt. And then, well, maybe today would be very different. I'd hug Genghis Khan. Really? He'd hug you back too, you know. Genghis loved hugs. He'll see how strong I am and he'll he'll compliment you. You know who wouldn't hug you back though? Napoleon. He would not hug you back. But I'm Polish. He's too busy rubbing his belly. Is he hungry? <laughs> Is he hungry? I can feed him. No, he had stomach ulcers. That's why he always has his hand in his coat. Because he's rubbing his stomach. He doesn't have to hug me back. I'll just hug him. No, no, he's too busy. Too busy. He doesn't have to do anything. He, yeah, no, but... He, you know, sometimes you want a hug back. I'll take. He's not going to give you that hug back. He's not going to give you that hug. 
I'm not going to give you that hug But back. I'll invite him to a water park and everything. Sammo Hung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are, Sammo. <laughs> yeah, you are, buddy. Didn't I say his name earlier this episode? Yeah, I know, <laughs> but now I'm saying it, and I'm implicating his penis size. Okay. I'm just saying he's well known, so... He's hung. Oh, Wu. It was Daniel Wu. These are just actors in the film. I think he was one of the choreographers. Oh, cool. Cool. And Kathy, with Kathy Bates. Not and, with. And Schwarzenegger. Arnold. Actually, it's pronounced Schwarzenegger. It is not. Schwarzenegger? No, it's not. I know. You're a, you're a joker. Schwarz means black. You're a joker. Coming in here making jokes. How about you give us your review and a rating, buddy? I'll be the ultimate joke of all. No, you. Okay. Hey, look. Poon Yi Chi. Yin Chi. Okay, come on. Hit, hit us, buddy. <clears throat> I know you, you're busting at the seams. This film... Is shit is not a thing that I would say. <laughs> this film is good is a thing that I would say. I heard it here. I heard it there. I heard it everywhere. Thank you for laughing. I was waiting for all three of us. Matt, <laughs> Matt Damon. Uh, that's a really good joke. You should put that in the script. Um, <laughs> this film is definitely one that I would put in the ranks of those like Thunderpants and um, Bubble Boy in the sense that it is a film that travels around. It has multiple settings, Mm. multiple different characters that you meet, multiple different eccentricities in these places, which I guess you could also compare it to Eurotrip in a way, but that one's... I mean, can't you compare everything to Eurotrip in a way? It was 2004, Ryan. It was Didn't it have Matt Damon in it? Yeah, he sang the song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Matt Damon? <laughs> yes, Scotty Doesn't Know was that famous Matt Damon song. <laughs> um, this film is... And those two films, you would recall, I liked. Of the 105, six movies we've done, you you distinctly remember that those ones I liked. Yeah, yeah. As well as the other 102. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would put that film up there. It, it's definitely very different to that because those, I feel, were a bit more absurd in nature. Whereas, apart from, like, casting choices like Arnold Schwarzenegger as as an Ottoman prince mm. and, uh, you know, an American lady as a British royalty person, um, this one definitely feels, I guess, more grounded in a way. Yeah. Like, not super realistically grounded, but definitely enough to make it a very charming little adventure film. Which, and again, I've, I've mentioned, I've already established in this episode, so I can't pretend. I am not familiar with Jules Verne. But I do know that Around the World in 80 Days is a very famous adventure story in literary culture. Mm-hmm. This film is also a very good adventure film, both in terms of what it takes from the source material and its unique additions, its idiosyncrasies, the martial arts, the the humour style of Jackie Chan. This is really just a film you can't go wrong with. I think the only way you could go wrong with this film is if you just don't remember it. And funnily enough... A lot of people don't. Tragedy. If I had to give this film a rating... Which you do. I would I would say I would be delighted to give you a rating. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, no, I thought that was going to be your rating. <laughs> well, we always start it with if I have to give it a rating. No, though you say so I would be delighted to give you a rating. That's my rating. <laughs> I would. Ne- that's a Ryan joke. I would not do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. The the rating that I would give this film is 26. Out of? 26. Whoa, that's 100% of that. I want to give it a, a rating for every single letter of the alphabet because... Of the English alphabet? Of the, of the Roman alphabet. Mm. Because those are the tools by which I express my love for this film emotional now i'm gonna give my rating and review and all that this film was gorgeous it was a real fun time the tone of the film is 
really light and that's a good thing you know sometimes a film can just have a light fun tone and the pacing of it is good it's an adventure film that knows to keep it at a good pace and knows to keep it short relatively short yeah it's almost two hours long but movies now like two and a half hours and you just go whoa why are you two and a half hours when all i'm watching is you know, whatever's, you know, whatever popular movies coming out, you know, like... Say two and a half? Yeah, no. It was just two. No, no, more, most movies today... Oh, sorry. I are two and a half. You weren't listening. It's okay. Let's start the episode again. Hello, listening people. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, most movies now are two and a half hours and there's no reason for it or they're broken up into several parts. This is just one movie based on the book. And whether it follows the book directly or not does not matter because this film is... An interesting film on its own right. It is fun. It has great casting. Steve Coogan really adds a lot of humanity, charm, and wit. But Jackie Chan adds a lot of the uh, elements of heart to it as well. And the action definitely is entertaining. It has funny little quips and turns. And I would recommend it very much so. It is an unappreciated masterpiece that deserves to be appreciated masterpiece if i have to give this a rating which i do i'd have to give this a that's such a ryan joke out of a that's a bartek joke which one's more valuable you interpret it uh lauren because unfortunately only the the better option would be the ryan one because it's the rating you give it and that means if it's better than the bartek one bartek would be like the 100 percent line and bartek one's by the 100 and i'd feel really bad yeah. because there's no way i could twist it that mine is more valuable the most valuable one's a lauren joke <laughs> <laughs> that's like one and a half ryan jokes that's like her life is the joke oh, but it's like three guys. it's like three, oh, it's like three bartek jokes though yeah it's three bartek jokes <laughs> lauren Let's hear from you. Okay. Um, this film is definitely an entertaining one. Far more entertaining than I remember it yeah. being. And it has this quality that reminds me of why I love British film. Yeah. And that is because of the charm, the wit. The broad bent. The broad bent. The Coogan. Me not being able to stop looking at British men's mouths for some particular reason. Um, it's her. It's her fetish. Which maybe, one, maybe it is my fetish. Which of you two know. was it that said that Steve Coogan didn't look like a good kisser? Uh, Lauren. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> She's looking at his mouth. Um, <laughs> like Lauren's. Like Lauren's a good judge. How, was, how good he how is at kissing. His mouth. His um, legs were much more interesting for Lauren. Okay. Uh, um, go on, Loza. It has all the small cameos, which you don't get as much now in the bigger budget films. Like, if you do, they're a lot more subtle. Like, yeah. like in Star Wars, they don't stop the movie to go, "Hey, look, we visited Simon Pegg's character." As much, you know. It's I like... guess, I guess, like I was saying before about comparing it to Thunderpants and uh, the Bubble Boy, those two films were kind of made for those more cameo things. So you get like people like Fabio. And, yeah, and mm. Stephen Fry and all that. Danny Trejo. Yeah. Danny Trejo. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it just Troyer. reminds me of like you're going on an adventure when you're a kid and you're creating this kind of fake story and you're going, once upon a time, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened. And Schwarzenegger and was, and Schwarzenegger a, Turkish was prince. a Turkish prince. Um, so it kind of has that form- formula and I quite like that. So I am giving it. A Coogan smile out of a Coogan smile. Ooh, that's pretty big. It's 100%. But you know what? It's Same percentage as mine. You know what 100% is? It's a percentage, yeah. And you know who gives 100%? YouTube. <gasps> when it comes to brilliant comments found by Bartek on the trailer <laughs> for the film. Just the trailer? Yes. People on YouTube are very um, special. Uh, not in the touch by an angel sense, but in the X Men sense, um, <laughs> they have powers of deduction primarily. Uh, Bartek, let's hear from the brilliant users of YouTube. Well, I want to start off just a teensy weensy, but not very much different way, Ryan. Normally, I find these comments from official trailers. <gasps> 
This one's an unofficial one, and with that comes a custom description for the video. <laughs> it's, it's not that amazing, but I, I included it this time, because it, it, it has thought put into it, and I appreciate Character? it. Character? The description for this trailer is, This is not a remake of the original movie. It is also not a faithful adaptation to Jules Verne's literary work. What it is, is a delightful comedic, in brackets, dare I say parody, version of a story many of us have enjoyed. It is labelled a Disney production. Oh, thanks, but, Disney. But in truth, Disney only distributed it. Oh. But oh. it is made with Disney's involvement firmly in mind and is a fun, adventurous, and even rousing family movie. I know, that was you, Walt Disney, who wrote that. <laughs> Good job, Walt. Cheeky bastard. He unfroze himself just to write that. The first comment is, and it starts with a quote. Ooh! This is what happens when you leave home. You meet people, end quote. Oh, best quote ever. Love this movie. That was one of the best quotes. I hear Lauren quoting it every day. Ryan, which character said that quote? Uh, I do believe it was Steve Coogan. Cool. I don't remember, so thank you for telling me. The next comment... It would be weird <laughs> if it was Jackie Chan's character. <laughs> the character who has been around the world. <laughs> Alright, the next comment is... This is actually a decent movie if watch it on its own without knowing the original novel. I, I agree. And the response to this is, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, sorry. The next comment is... Jackie Chan is an outstanding actor. He plays so many different emotions and characters so well. <laughs> he was great in Rush Hour, but my personal favourite was the remake of Karate Kid. He really showcases his many talents as an actor and as a stuntman. He does. Lauren laughed because she just couldn't agree any harder that it got her hysterical. The next comment is, I often wonder why this movie was not a super duper hit. Such a lovely movie can be watched and enjoyed all kind people and of all ages. I agree. All mm -hmm. kind people. <laughs> well, I, I don't want unkind people watching this. <laughs> we, had a, we had mostly positive comments. So oh I, I no, thought... here we have a not all kind people. <laughs> so I want to put two comments from Did some they... of the, the, the philosophers of the people who don't think this mm -hmm. film is great. The first comment by this person is, This movie suck, which shows their opinion. And the next comment that they made is, Horrible movie ever. <laughs> Yeah, they, they suck. This next comment is probably a bit redundant because I mentioned its point in the episode. From the author of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh, that's and, a great book too. And actually. the director of The Wedding Singer and The Water Boy. Yeah. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is also one of his iconic ones. That kind of had the idea of submarines a lot. Um, his one is made out of wood, I'm pretty sure, though. Uh, but... Yeah, and the film version, just off topic, the film version has Kirk Douglas teamed up with Peter Lorre fighting a giant octopus. And it's a real, like, prop octopus that's, like, to scale of how big the Kraken-like thing is. It's awesome. You should watch the Disney's version of that at some point in your life. It's really fun. The next comment makes a good point. I bet it does. I'm going to read it slowly just so I can say it all properly. Okay, We're let's ready absorb this, Lauren. Yeah. And there's no commas, so that's, you know, I just want okay. to... Okay. Sometimes when Jackie Chan is on screen most of the time, I sometimes think that it's a Jackie Chan film with Kung Fu. I also <laughs> think that, and sometimes I'm surprised. Do you think I'm that surprised. sometimes when he's on screen most of the time, you sometimes think that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wrote that. That was me. The next one is the longest comment, and it's also the last comment. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Holy shit, this is one of my most favourite movies ever. The story is interesting and... And as the plot goes on, you get absorbed into the pioneer spirit. As the movie goes on, the stakes get higher and the movie gets more exciting. It's a fun adventure that you can't help but enjoy. Not to mention that the comedy is so cheesy that it's actually. 
The highlight of the movie is when Fog is in <laughs> San Francisco, where was just robbed. As you, this man in despair, thinking that he will never fulfill his dream, find the woman he loves and win the bet. At that time when he is fallen into the most low moment in his life, he is found by his best friend and his love interest. They proved him that man with a dream so big cannot do that much alone. Even at his worst, he discovers how much he means to those people. Where, sorry, <clears throat> even at his lowest, he has already travelled a distance in a period that no man has ever done before. And when you see how thousands of Americans believe in him, that he could do what no man had done before, that is the greatest moment of this film. No matter how unbelievable and ridiculous this situation is, people still cheers him on his road to progressing mankind. You know what? what? I, you know what I felt like should have been playing under that when you talked. Yeah. Just really inspirational music. <laughs> well, let's not forget that. Not to mention that the comedy is so cheesy that it's actually. <laughs> that's where you lost. Like that's <laughs> the <laughs> sent- that's the sentence in which his English started to deteriorate. That's the one where I really heard your reaction. I was just like. <laughs> All right. Like the what highlight. Of, the highlight of the movie is when Fog is in San Francisco. Where was just robbed? Yes. Well, that's, that's it. Lauren, it was fantastic to have you on the show. We know that you loved the film, and we know that you had a fun time coming on, even if we made fun of how you all like, I'm from Paris. I go to Antarctica, which is actually pronou- pronounced Antarctica. But, you know, I know that because no, right. I've been to Paris. Right. Antarctica. Oh, Antarctica. <laughs> and, you know, I would go to Australasia, which is, you know, located in Oceania, in Oceania partially, partially. where I would go to Sydney. I've been Sydney. to Sydney. No, Sydney. no, Sydney. And Age I would lied. travel all the way to Lindon, and then I would go to the big TikTok. All right, enough picking on Lauren. <laughs> enough time picking on Lauren. Enough time has passed on that. It's now time to pick on you because you guys have been fantastic and amazing, wonderful listening people. But you guys, you know what you could do? You could share us around, you know, like, like you know, you're on the street corner and you're like, hey, kid, you want to he- see a cool podcast? And then they'll be like, I can't see one. I have to hear it. And he's like, make dang, sh- you got me there. Make sure you're wearing a coat when you say that. And nothing else. <laughs> and, uh, you can wear others. Maybe some shoes. Uh, just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Classy shoes. And those kind of pants that only attach from the knees so that it looks like you're wearing can pants I all the way clarify, up. But then shoes that have blades on the end of them? Only on one <laughs> shoe, though. And make sure you meet some ticklish people. <laughs> and share the podcast around where Spit and Polish Presents, and we're on iTunes, we're on Podbean, we're on YouTube, we're on all manner of stuff. Stitcher, hopefully one day Spotify, I don't know, they won't Facebook. get back to me. Facebook is where, you know, our social media is primarily at. You can drop us a message on there, that's Spit and Polish Presents. Hey, you got iTunes? Maybe you could be awesome and, uh, you know, give us a rating and a review on on the iTunes because that helps. That helps quite a lot in getting other people listening to the show and showing people what great content we make. And, you know, if you're... Hey! Tell them where you lolled. Tell them where you lolled. And, you know, we've got our other show, The Mystery Box, in which we talk about movies that we found randomly at an op shop or secondhand store or wherever and we watch it at random and we talk about it afterwards. And if you're up for that... And, um, well, that's pretty much it. You guys, like I said, been fantastic and wonderful. Lauren, amazing to have you back. It's been so long. Bartek, you were really good today. Some good zingers. You peaked at Matt Damon, but it's hard not to. Technically, I said Matt Damon, and then he he just took it from me. Well, Lauren, don't steal from him. It was his moment. I actually think it was me, though. I think you actually are stealing from me. <gasps> okay, guys, I'll be the middle ground. It was me. <laughs> I can always count on you, Ryan. <laughs> literally in the middle of the three of us and literally the middle man. You guys, remember to be kind to each other. And I should probably take this ending part to apologize for something, the scandal that I've been involved in this year. My God, what did you do? 
Well, you you know this, Ryan. You've already, you've, you've mentioned it to me outside of the show. It, oh, it's God. related to I believe it was one of the episodes in February. I brought up the the joke about the leprechauns and the Irish priest. Yeah, there was an episode. You said you're gonna I, tell us that joke in the was, next episode, and it never happened. Yeah, I did. I I did say that, and it never ended up happening. So there's only one way to end this episode, and I I, I will you know I'll address the audience. Sorry, I forgot. That's the reason why I never told the joke. 